heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be oh. Purge the anti-Semitism and pro-terrorism. Terror uh, what, what you're doing, you have the ocean and you have the sun. There's something about that that works. Lumpy pillows kiss my ass. PP2. Under siege, Second Amendment. I think people saw that loud and clear. It did. Oh yeah, that's normal. We are going to be a country no more. I, I actually think it will not, it will be a country no more. I had a beat off. I had a beat off. In his sock draw. Free health care for illegal Ill 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 Michigan gave us Motang. Gave us Motown, gave us the Mustang. Combat infantry men. I know words, I had the best words. And an ominous, really an, an ominous. Criminal, look, look, wait. Very large a brain. Combat infantry men to be a stink singer. I know words, I had the best words. Here I am like an idiot. Combat. The demonstrators who infiltrated the cap have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. I know words. I had the best words. They sacrifice every day for the furniture and future. that but hit that like let people know we're here we start a little later on thursday so some people get very confused i like fighting number two i felt really good almost after taking it they don't like the gas once it was reluctantly aroused it was hard to get it aroused and it is hard to get it aroused but we got it aroused So this, uh, Burmisia, Burmisia, they say, pronounce it Burmisia. Free health care for illegal, yeah, look. Action replays in magnified fortune. Door, but I call it a smart door. I don't read, obviously. All right. I think up. I think we're up and running. I think we're getting pretty darn close. I think I'm excited. Um. Yep. yep check. Check. Any check? Check. Check. And what happens at this? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hello. How you doing? What's going on? Uh, it's Thursday. Um, hit that like, let people know we're here. You know, I start a little bit later, so it throws everybody off. And uh, I'm very excited that you're here. Um, share the show out on your socials, as you were, while they still exist. I know they're going to get wiped out very, very soon um, by our robot overlords, clearly. I don't know if you guys saw the new um, robot, robot uh, from, let's see if I can put it the Atlas 2 from Boston Dynamics. From Boston Brian. Boston Brian has his own robot. I don't know if you know this. But uh, they, you know everybody uh, got all freaked out about the um, the Boston Dynamics robot that uh, could do parkour and it could dance and, and it could lift things and it could do flips and everybody's like, oh my God, Boston Brian's going to kill us. I mean, Boston Dynamics is going to kill us all. And ultimately, um, they... I want you to know that uh, that computer, that robot, has been discontinued and replaced with one that is smaller, stronger, and completely silent. Yes, let me introduce you, if I will, to this is this is how they start. This is their debut of the all new Atlas. It starts laying on the ground. 
enjoy this because I'm going to have to talk to Rob Glenn about this tomorrow morning on the morning show. Um, there, there she is. That's that's the new Atlas. Now watch this. This is not a com a computerized version of uh, of the Exorcist, but it could be. Uh huh. It just walks up. Got a ring light for a face, an antenna on the top of its head. That's zero zero one, and then it walks off, and that's the whole thing. That's all they're showing you. Um, yeah. My favorite part is the weird contortion contortionist part where it moves it folds its legs back over on itself to pick itself up when it falls down instead of having to roll over. There's no real audio on it, so it's just the kind of clackety clack of it walking, but that's basically it. And it, and the ring light's nice because the good thing about it is it's basically like a, uh, it's like, think of it as the influencer bot. This is, the first people are going to buy this are going to be like super rich influencers that always need a ring light to make sure that their eyes have the perfect kind of glow when they're doing their walk around tour videos with their personal cameraman, which is what that'll be. So there you go. That's the, uh, that it is. Can it pour you a beer? Yes, it can. As a matter of fact, uh, hi chat room, by the way, welcome. And, uh, also the, I think Google just put out there, let's see, Google robot. Um, they just showed their first Google, their, their first thing. Where is it? I don't. I. I don't. It might be on a bigger video, so I might have to hunt it down. But the um, the new Google video, um, is or Google robot rather is very similar to like a walk. Think of it as a walking version of that one that I just showed you, um, and a mix of the robot that has uh that was sorting trash I showed you the other week. We're gonna we'll deal with AI and robotics tomorrow on Friday. I. Because there's been a whole lot of movement, but uh, first up, um, I, I have a lot to cover. Not not the least of which, of course, is the shouting match between Jamie Raskin and uh, and Comer, which is hilarious. And uh, Trump are, uh, leaving court. There was no. I don't think I couldn't find an arrival video of him this morning. So he apparently just snuck straight in and went straight to sleep. Um, but you know how he's been warning us about all the crime in New York and how our our society we're a country in decline and everything is just being destroyed and there's nothing left and it's just well I'm sorry to say he's he's right there's clearly I have some video to show you and it's very alarming and frightening that sh this happened in New York too right uh, you know and I, I I can't hide from it I will not lie just for political gratification like some of these folks will this uh I don't know if you know this but um God, how do I present this brace yourselves um, 353 ballerinas, uh, danced on their tiptoes to break the Guinness book world record for ballerinas dancing on their tiptoes all at once, um, yesterday. And, um, if this happened while the, while the DA in New York was all tied up trying to go after Trump for something that's only a crime in the place he's being tried in. How terrifying. Look at this. I want you to see this. This is just... Look at this. Three, they set a timer two, and they made them all do it. One, go. Look at it. It's horrifying. I can't okay. even. Okay. It's just, my, look at their feet. It's, the the violence. I'm they sorry. Were, I'm probably going to be taken down off of uh, YouTube for just for showing this because it's the, the again, violence, the, the horror, the, the, dis about, the disgust. Um, giving for children something and giving for young dancers something. It's just hideous. I can't. I need Even. to make sure that they are in very prof professional ballet clothes and shoes. And that they this need to stand This happened in New York City. In America? In America? In 2024? What in the ever-loving hell? it was very... Here's one of the... Uh, Victims cool. slash so perpetrators. They're allowing the her to talk on camera. And accomplish a goal. Just. I was really excited to be surrounded by. I all can't. The I can't. Dancers. I can't. I gotta. I. I have to stop it. I just can't. Uh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh. I hope some of you are gonna be recovering okay, but um. That is the. I mean. Trump has been telling us that you can't even go out into New York, into this, onto the streets, anywhere around, without being murdered and mugged. Not necessarily in that order. 
which I mean, I guess technically, if you've been murdered first, you can't mug a dead body. I, I don't know what the look. It's not important. Just all kinds of horrors are happening, including what I what I just showed you. Um, gangs of these ballerinas are just roaming the streets. <laughs> How are we even supposed to recover? You know what I mean? Yeah, these are ninth world ballerinas. Not these are definitely like it's. We're like a a ninth yeah. world country, not a third world country. A ninth world country. I know. Can you imagine this? Just the hideousness. Also. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but um, uh, Biden came out and spoke uh, about the. Let's see if I can bring this up. Hang on. Folks, it was. Uh, I was almost uh, exactly five years ago that I began my campaign. Hold on. For dim, dim, dim. It really does have a steel spine. But, Hold on. And it was already pause this. So um, I don't know why this is quiet, but um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't know how Joe Biden is allowed to even say these communistic commie commie things um that are that he's commying about and all the at oh the communicity is all i'm gonna say uh he was speaking to some some people i i guess in 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 pittsburgh of all places go bucks um and listen listen to what he said this is the most un-american it's been mentioned a thousand times thankfully since then that the backbone of America has a steel spine. It really does have a steel spine. You heard me say it before. Wall Street didn't build America. The middle class didn't build, build America. And you guys built the middle class. Unions built it. And that's why I'm here today to announce a series of actions that I... These series of actions are just horrifying. They're, they're just terrible. How, how is he allowed to do this? This is fake president. It's probably a robot. It's probably a Boston Dynamics president. This is all CGI. I stand by you, the American steelworker. Look, first, U.S. Steel has been an iconic American company for more than a century, and it should remain a totally American company. Yeah! What kind of Joe, uh, Joe Biden has now stolen a talking point from Donald Trump that wasn't actually a talking point? You ever wonder why they haven't been talking about this? Yeah, that, that's why Trump stopped talking about U.S. Steel. American owned, American operated by American Union steel workers, the best in the world. And it's, that's going to happen, I promise you. Well, God, that, that's just pandering, obviously. He doesn't actually believe that shit, does he? I mean, what's he going to use all that steel for? I mean, obviously he's bought by China, so he's probably trying to just stop Japan from buying U.S. Steel so that he can let China dump steal onto the market and 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 push away one of our allies second Probably. america still working out work out compete as long as they have fair competition but for too long the chinese government has poured state money into chinese steel companies Put wait a minute i uh, are you telling me that jamie comer is full of shit pushing them to make so much steel as much as possible subsidized by the chinese government because Chinese steel companies produce a lot more steel than China needs, it ends up dumping extra steel into the global markets. Wait a minute. I thought he was bought and paid for. I, I, somebody in, in the CCP is having buyer's remorse right now, I think. Unfairly low price. If they haven't been murdered by Xi Jinping already for not seeing that the CHIPS Act was coming. Granted. And the prices are unfairly low because China steel companies don't need to worry about making a profit because the Chinese government has subsidized them so heavily. They're not competing. They're cheating. They're what? What? What the hell? I'm... What did... What did China get for its money? I'm starting to think that... That, uh, that this is... Joe Biden becoming president was just part of him scamming the Chinese government out of money. <laughs> He's stealing China money. He's take. Will this be the next charge from Comer and all the, that crowd is that he is stealing money from Chinese people. He's, he's promising he will help them enter the U.S. market, help them take over U.S. industries, help them get access to technology that they can use in their military. And then he takes their money and they give it to the money to do it. And then he doesn't. And then he make, he slams the door on their fingers. What an asshole. Cheating. And we've seen the damage here in America. 
you know, back in the early 2000s, the Chinese steel began floating the mar- fl- flooding the market in steel towns all across Pennsylvania and Ohio, who hit very hard. Between those years, 2000 and 2010, more than 14,000 steel workers in Pennsylvania and Ohio lost their jobs. 14,000. Let me ask you, are we going to let that happen again? No! I promise you, and I'm not going to let that happen again. It's just horrifying. Like, how can he do that? How can he cheat those poor Chinese Communist Party members out of their hard-earned money and then not deliver? How dare he? (laughs) They get all this China money. And what are they getting in exchange? All right, so uh, I'd like to lay that out there. So, one, uh, Japan is not going to buy U.S. steel. Uh, And then, of course, on top of that, um, they, they, there's at no point are they going to, uh, <laughs> is, is going to allow Chinese, uh, steel dumping. Now, speaking of dumping, um, there have been in terms of, I, I don't know how else to describe how the Republicans are treating Mike Johnson, except, um, they just drop trow, stand on his shoulders and leave what, what dumps, they call them dumps, big, massive dumps. Yeah. They're just taking <laughs> big, massive dumps on Mike Johnson. Um, now, granted, I hear you. I hear you. I like You're saying, Hal, I understand that some of them are attacking Mike Johnson, but it's not about his position on Ukraine. Well, it is if you're Marjorie Taylor Greene because all of her, uh, you know, Russian donor money is going out the window and, and that QAnon funding that she got that got her in office in the first place. You know, you, 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 you leave with the one that brought you to the dance, as it were. Uh, unless you're Lauren Boebert, in which case it's just kind of you, you just I, you monkey branch between penises, apparently. But uh, when when it comes to one of these folks, um, I I have the feeling that you know McCarthy was under the impression that this guy wanted him ousted to stop the ethics investigation into him, and that invest investigation has started up again. So curiously enough. This fella seems to be having issues with the speaker once again. Let's let's see, shall we? Does Matt Gates support motion to vacate against Speaker Johnson on foreign aid bill fights? Mr. Gates, so you have been opposed to move. Also, tan suit, motherfucker, tan suit. I don't even know how, why. How is this even allowed? The, the world is upside down. What in the ever loving shit? This is some bullshit. Uh, right wearing a tan suit. he's wearing a tan suit what in the ever loving how, how do you get uh, yeah <laughs> well it's not corduroy i guarantee it's not corduroy because he doesn't want his victims to hear him sneaking up on him because uh, believe me if if matt gates wore corduroy suits there would be like dozens of pages in the, in the Capitol that are going to therapy because the sound vroom, 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 gives them flashbacks. Moving forward on a motion to vacate. Now that they're talking about possibly changing those rules, have you changed your mind? Uh, I hope we don't have to go down that road. It was very puzzling and concerning to me that Congressman Van Orton, in a conversation we just had on the floor, repeatedly was uh, insisting that we call a motion to vacate to the floor. He was demanding it in, in kind of a unhinged way oh okay by the way the, uh, after uh moskowitz uh said why don't we do it i'll somebody i'll put the motion up for an impeachment hearing somebody second it somebody up here second it will the chair second it will the republican second it and um and then that bring it up for a vote in the committee or whatever and they wouldn't do it okay same thing republicans are, you know are are talking a big fucking game so democrats have started calling their fucking bluff on the floor that's what this is so one of the uh, democrats was like let's do it Let's. Uh, there, you, there's a motion to vacate. They put it in there. They have a one vote rule. Let's do it. You know why? Because they know there's a bunch of Republicans that aren't in the House. They don't have a majority. So it would make Speaker Jeffries. It would make it would make Hakeem uh, Jeffries the Speaker. So I mean, where are you on whether or not you would support a motion? And by the way, Bobert's like latched next to him. I guess it's maybe it's all the Viagra and chewable uh, um, energy to vacate pills or whatever at this moment well i didn't support one when i woke up this morning so do you support one now we got we got more time in the day what do you think of feel like just douchey bullshit just in general no, about his... no, I, let, let me clarify that he caught himself in stuff like let me kind of i'm not threatening him or whatever i'm let me let me puss out real quick i think a motion to vacate 
um, is, is something that could put the conference in peril. And Ms. Mm -hmm. Bobert and I were working to avoid that. Our goal is to avoid. Weren't yet. They were. They're working. Hey. Hey. Come on. They're, they're working. They're working to avoid this. They're putting in the work to avoid one of the other Freedom Caucus members' motions being brought to the floor. It's, it, I mean, it, hey, it's work, all right? It's, you know, it's not the jobs they're used to, but... ...a motion to vacate, but we are not going to surrender that accountability tool, particularly in a time when we're seeing America's interests subjugated to foreign interests abroad. And <laughs> subjugated? You guys didn't vote on the fuck, the, the border bill. The fuck are you talking about? Explain what was going on with Mr. Van Orden. He kept demanding that we file a motion to vacate and demanding that we do it in a privileged way. And, and what does that mean? I mean, does it, does it surprise you? He's calling their bluff, dum dum. In this climate, that people might be saying that. And we've heard this from Mr. Massey. We've heard this from Ms. Green. I, I, the only thing I gleaned from it is that Mr. Van Orton is not a particularly intelligent individual. What, what did you, you spoke to the speaker? What was that conversation like? Tense. Why? <laughs> um, well, he's obviously somebody with an app on his phone that guards, you know, porn, uh, you know, like his porn usage would be very nervous talking to um, somebody who is currently having to be deposed in a, in an underage sex trafficking investigation where his wingman went to fucking jail and he's been known to show pictures of uh, nude conquests on the floor to other members. It can be a bit awkward. Yeah. Because we don't want to pass this bill. We do not. Look, the, only way, yeah, with the only win we've got in the House of Representatives is blocking the Senate supplemental. And so if he's ready to throw in the towel on that, what are we doing here? How is that a win also? What win? What, what, what possible dent does the Senate supplemental make in the fucking bill? Or, you know, in the, in the budget for the military, much less the overall debt. I'm dead serious. There, there, there's, in their way of speaking, they are standing in floodwaters punching raindrops. And they want credit for punching raindrops. You could build a dam. You could rebuild some of the stuff that was washed away in a flood. You could start bailing the fucking water out. But instead, he's going, we're, sta we're standing here punching raindrops. And and that it, we need credit for that. It's fucking so lame. And what did he say in response? I, I think that he views the Ukraine issue very differently than, than we do. We're working. Right, because he's been briefed on it, and he has a son who is going into the military, and he doesn't want him fighting in Ukraine. Worried about America's border. He seems to be more... No, you're not. You voted against the border bill. Shut the fuck up. Worried about Ukraine. What about the House working its will? The idea did. that... Oh, thanks. That I'm glad you guys like the uh, punching raindrops um, uh, analogy. I just made that up. I know it sounds like a classic, but it really just came off the top of my dome. And it's, it's how I best... <laughs> yeah. Don't go punching raindrops. You'll just make an ass of yourself in wet pants. It's um, it's it, it, as a, as an analogy for them bitching about Ukraine funding in you know because of the budget, which they again six trillion dollar tax cut. Eat shit. These motherfuckers chiseled a hole in the dam that was there. That, 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 you know, many on your side. You're not stealing it, Josh. You're using it, and I'm glad. It's uh, it's what I'm here for. So we want the House to work its will. The idea that you might have a coalition of some Republicans and Democrats getting together on that isn't that reflective of what you want it to do? Even though it might not reflect what your policy goals. <laughs> yes, isn't isn't a bipartisan agreement on something really? You know what you said you were trying to do, uh, except when it doesn't include you, in which case it's a betrayal or because it's not all Republicans for something. Well, my goal was to have open amendments. You want to put these bills on the floor and have absolute open amendments? Yes, you want open amendments because it's the lazy man's filibuster in the House. Open amendments means you can literally get together 20 fucking Freedom Caucasians and stand there and just bullshit till the, you know, till the cows come home, till the... the whatever the budgetary limit happens and just burn it all down. Uh, I think that that would be far more palatable than the path that we're currently going on. Do you have confidence in the speaker right now? 
It's diminishing. Mr. Gates, I know that you said that you went into the car. It's diminishing. I'm sure he's uh, he's really sweating it. You do realize that for the, a dude who thinks God wants him to be Moses and he believes himself to be a, you know himself to be a tried true Pensian evangelical in a lot of ways, having Bobert and Gates dislike him is a fucking win. Did these assholes know that? He's he's being deposed soon in a in a sex trafficking case where he had sex with a 17-year-old girl that by the way could not consent because she was on drugs at the time they had sex. And 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 dipshit over here um Bobo Bobert over here is groping her man and vaping and yelling in a musical where children are present and and they think that this this fucking like evangelical hardliner that is, uh, you know, Mike Johnson is going to not take that as a as a good sign that they're against him. Conversation looking for assurances that he wasn't looking to change the motion to vacate and he didn't get that. Can you characterize what he did say when you looked for those assurances? He was he was not, he was equivocating. Does it sound like it's going to come in the rule that they're going to do that to today? We sought clarification that a change to the motion to vacate threshold would not be in the rule, and we did not get the answer that we wanted. But can you? It, it, Oh, right. Yeah, so oh, that's also, they're changing, there's talk about changing the rules so that it takes, I don't know, like five votes or a plurality, which, by the way, one of the reasons it's always been one vote for a long time is because up till now, there was a level of sanity that you wouldn't let one rando, that somebody would shut it down. Nobody would second it and bring it to the floor, that, you, that it would take more than that. So you could make it one because, you know, you knew you didn't have the votes, and so it was a waste of fucking time. But since these assholes have, know they have such a razor thin majority, and they and they know Democrats have no interest in anybody they would put forward as a speaker that was in line with these assholes, they, they know they can they can use that as leverage. It's never been leverage before. Can you elaborate on what his answer was? Can you yeah, can you elaborate what was on that? that? What was I'm his sorry, answer? I didn't hear you. What was his answer to that? Uh, he was he was equivocating. We didn't really get an answer. If the speaker continues to push forward with his plan, putting these... By the way, he wasn't equivocating. He was answering in long form. He wasn't giving you a, okay, that's what equivocating is. To, to him, equivocating means not saying yes to whatever I said immediately. Bills on the floor. You said your confidence in him is already diminishing. Is there a red line for you? Uh, well, not really. For me, I, I want the speaker to be as good a speaker as he can be. Yeah, it, right, except you want control over him which means the your idea of the best speaker he can be is your puppet in the seat i had the same goals for the last guy right but then that whole like ethics investigation into you sex trafficking a 17 year old who was under the influence of drugs when you flew her out of state and served her up to your weirdo fucking friends uh, but when they drift away from that and, and look when we voted for mike johnson for speaker he, had, he was fresh off of a vote against Ukraine aid. Yes. He was publicly advocating for a warrant requirement on FISA. Yes. And the central thesis of his campaign for speaker was single subject spending bills. How do you explain that? Well, I... I, I... Reality? I certainly don't explain it with a rubric of success. Does, but we doesn't, he have, are. doesn't he have different responses? Yes, you've passed uh, two... Uh, you, the bills, the single uh, subject bills were, you know, budget proposals was never going to fucking happen. Never, not ever. Period. So he he ran on the impossible and fell back to the possible. And that's where they're like, I don't trust this guy. Responsibilities of speaking. I mean, I don't know why at this point, why Matt Gates doesn't just get a job on, on TYT. Though. It's natural. I mean, he, you know, some people say, well, he changed his position on FISA based when he was on the Judiciary Committee. That when you're in the Speakership, your role changes. You have to be the Speaker of the House, just well, not your I don't think that being elected Speaker is a permission structure to surrender your deeply held beliefs. Yes. Mm -hmm. so well, I think ultimately what you're really confronting is, is that in his case, these aren't deeply held beliefs. And in most of even the Freedom Caucus, this isn't deeply held beliefs. These are either... In his case, for example, these aren't he doesn't have a deeply held belief about Ukraine aid or even the border. He just wants the ethics investigation into him shut down. You, you think she actually gives a fuck about any of this stuff? Would TYT hire him? I don't know. Uh, he's been on TY, TYT. I have not in the last six years or whatever. So he says putting the so 
Make make a bet what you will. I wouldn't, but they bill on the floor. He's sorry to interrupt you, Congresswoman. He says putting the bill on the floor for aid to Ukraine is the right thing to do. What do you say? I think the right thing to do would be insist on securing America's border. Yes. There's there's two. Then then why didn't you vote for the bill? Why didn't you vote for the border bill? If it's in, if the border bill that was put forward was insufficient, but it had a myriad of wins somehow. Don't you build on those? You go, that we passed this, and still we have this problem and this problem. The problem, the, the difficulty they have is that it would have solved the problem. $150 million <laughs> in this Ukraine bill for the World Bank. Thank you. With no even constraint that that money go to Ukraine. We're funding sub-Saharan African nations that don't even like us. One of the countries that could get money through the World Bank provision <laughs> is Niger, where America currently has 1,100 service members who can't get food, medicine, or mail because the Niger government won't allow diplomatic overflights. So we're not just funding our allies. Also, again, the the funding for the IMF through those is for like food aid and and that kind of stuff. That's why we're not giving it directly to Niger. Now, I, I just have a feeling like he brought them up because there's something about that country in particular that would strike his voters um, negatively, let's just say. In this bill, we're funding our enemies and we're doing so forsaking the American border. Niger's not a, an enemy, by the way. Certainly not the people. That's what our voters focused on. And Ms. Bobert and I want to get this Congress aligned with where the American people's interests are. That is securing the... Oh, you, uh, oh, you are. I, I, I will give credit where credit is due. Both of them are uh, helping to align the, the House of Representatives with the values of Americans. In that he's going to go to jail and she's going to lose her seat. <laughs> You've been great. Thanks so much. Thanks for helping. Both of you have uh, allowed us an opportunity, uh, you know, especially the people in your district, to go, you know what? No. <laughs> Man, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Southern Mac. border of the United States. I will eventually, but I got a lot of shit to do first. I appreciate it. States <laughs> not securing the eastern border of Ukraine. Did you get anything from throwing out Kevin McCarthy? Yeah, we got Hunter Biden under oath. We got... Th yeah, that, was, that worked out really well. That was, that was amazing. Yeah. Did that get you some chargeable crimes were you able to make a referral on what he said or get any new information no so showboating bullshit right thousands of hours the policies of the policies haven't changed well i think that the policy on mayorkas impeachment changed kevin mccarthy mm -hmm. was blocking the impeachment of mayorkas because he knew it was a waste of fucking time what happened it went to the senate it got voted down end of fucking conversation that's why it's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. They had other shit to do. They could have been arguing for their, you know, their version of the border bill and pushing that through. And maybe he would have resigned in disgrace or something like that. They could have pushed for that direction. But by going after him in an impeachment it, that was going to die in the Senate anyways, you've basically guaranteed he won't step down in this process. That's why. He wasn't being stupid. I don't like McCarthy at all. But it was the right decision. It literally just died. The, like two, like what is it, a day and a half ago? Mike Johnson allowed us to impeach my orcas. Yeah. So fucking what? It didn't even. It didn't even fucking chart on the news. I understand this. This is the first time we've what uh, they've they've impeached in the House. They've impeached a cabinet member in like a hundred years. And it, it it didn't even make, like, the round of the news. You could watch the whole fucking thing on C-SPAN if you wanted to, but it was a waste of fucking time. It looked like every other committee hearing that they'd ever had just bitching about the border and all that kind of stuff. It was meant to be, in a in, in a in an election year, a big campaign, like, trial of the century, literally, because it had been 100 years, and it did fucking nothing. It did nothing. That's why he didn't want to do it. If he thought there was a chance that the uh, that the Senate would, out of embarrassment, or the administration would ask him to step down because it was such a terrible case against him, he would have done it. McCarthy absolutely would have fucking done it if he thought it could be any kind of a fucking win. Win, and it was a waste of fucking money, time, and and screen time. Genuinely, I think that is the type of was fucking dumb. Of proactive action to get border response that this
You voted against the bill, dumb fuck. No, you don't get credit for impeaching Mayorkas when you voted against the border bill. Even if it's insufficient, you do not have a plurality. You do not have a mandate. You don't have the Senate. You don't have the administration. And you barely have half the House. The idea that these motherfuckers keep wanting to act like they have an 80-20 control of the House is why they fail so much. It is the same problem that we have with the faux aggressives sometimes. That a small pack of them wants to act like there's this huge giant mandate when there isn't. And they want to, quote, hold people's feet to the fire. Which is a torture analogy that should upset everyone is problematic. But who gives a fuck, right? But that's, we run into that. The difference is, those folks, so far anyways, are not willing to just cadaver the party in the process. They are. House wants. So I think that, I think, let me finish answering okay. Mona's question. So I think we got more January 6th tapes. We got the impeachment of Mayorkas. We got Hunter Biden under oath. More January 6th tapes. Yeah, you know what the result of that was? More Jan Sixers going to fucking jail for longer. Congratulations, dum dum. Some of these fuckwads were going to get away with it. And now, because you released footage, the, the, the FBI and everybody went, oh, wait, I know that motherfucker. Hang on. We were about to give him a deal. What the fuck is this? We haven't had time to look through all this. It's too fucking expensive. Check that against his Facebook feed. Oh, this motherfucker, that's his phone. He was filming himself while he was bear spraying a cop. Holy shit. That's what happened. Like, 20 of these motherfuckers got longer sentences. The big, the, the ones we've had over the last little bit, that's because of these dumb motherfuckers. Alexander Smirnoff would have got off scot-free. He'd have been out of the fucking country if anybody ever decided to look him up and figure out that he'd been bullshitting this whole time. But because they insisted that the FD-1023 not only be released to the public, but that the FBI actually dig into it. Why did you never look into these charges made by the FD-1023? Because we knew it was bullshit. And, and we didn't want to arrest a friend of Trump's again. We're doing you guys a favor, you dumb motherfucker. But on spending, Mike Johnson felt iced in to the Kevin McCarthy spending regime that was negotiated during... The spending regime. Shut the... F look, all right. Overuse of the word, word regime. If you believe you live in a country under a regime, then A, stop saying we're not a democracy and get the fuck out of here. Leave. Stop it. Why would anybody want to live in a democracy that that previously had administrations and now it has a regime. Flee the fucking country and be a congressman in exile. I mean, I don't want to give him any ideas because he's probably going to fucking do it. During the FRA, I think we should have liberated ourselves mm -hmm. from the... Liberators. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're the Nelson Mandela of budget talks, you dumb fuck. Kevin McCarthy deal when we liber <laughs> should fucking liberated ourselves. The, the ego... Like, as someone who has an enormous ego, I find this embarrassing. I, I, like, I, even I am like, tap it down. Like me, David Lee Roth, and Gene Simmons are going, hey, dude, Damn, it's a bad, bad look. Bring it. Yeah, yeah, just lower the temperature a little bit. You're looking like an asshole. Liberated ourselves from Kevin McCarthy. Unfortunately, Mike Johnson. Liberated yourselves from Kevin McCarthy. He was your speaker, you dumb motherfucker. That, it, it, you do realize it's nuts that you're talking about him worse than you talked about Nancy Pelosi. Fuck, they're talking about Mike Johnson and, 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 and McCarthy worse than they talk about Paul Pelosi, for fuck's sake. Good lord. Okay, anyways, that's the tail end of that shit. Oh, uh, God. Can I just say, though? Oh, uh, just the... Just the amount, the, the... We're just living in the age of popcorn, ladies and gentlemen. I, I gotta say. Whew, it's so nice. It's so, it's so good. Now, um, before we visit Donald Trump on his... Uh, well, I don't know. Is it longer? Is it shorter? What's the time on this? Yeah, it's pretty short. We'll, we'll do this. Let me tell you. Um, Trump will often take the stage. And by the way, hit that like, everybody. Uh, let people know we're here. Come on, you know. Even outside, it's packed.
but we got to let them know. Yes. And, and by the way, the lighting in this Trump video is such that it, you're not really getting super nunt, which is which is good. Um, but let me let me just start off by saying that um, if you're up on stage at a rally and you're having to show graphics of polling to prove that you're winning, you ain't. That's not how it works, especially if you're running away with it. Because if it's obvious you're winning, then you don't have to show those polls. You have to, you just go up there and show why you're winning. That's the point, which is exactly what Biden has been doing. Biden, Biden is going up to all these rallies and talking about infrastructure. And it, oh, oh, like there was, let me see if I, I think I have this in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, hold on. Let's see. Nothing. And by the way, these projects are going to be using, using American-made materials. Hold on, let me see it. This, uh, so Biden is talking in Pittsburgh. I'll show you this again real quick. Let me show you how uh, this kind of, this After works. Week. Okay, yeah, let me, this is, this is probably the best line of this. It, he's really gathering a good routine. I got to say, like he's doing the whole, um, the, you know, this guy came up, he was downtrodden. He goes, I'm buried in debt. And he says, Donald, I can't help you. Like that's, you stack that, you put that in the stump speech. That's going to be one. This next one also works very well because he's pitching infrastructure and need affordable internet all across America. You may remember my predecessor promised infrastructure week after week after week. <laughs> like that's a solid. For four years. And <laughs> that promised infrastructure week after week after week. It's just, it's a nice one, right? And it's going to like, they, they just like they're road shopping this, shopping this particular one in Pittsburgh, but it's going to be part of the regular stump speech. And he'll get better at telling it. And that's how it works. As a comedian, I'll tell you. That's how just, even Trump, that's one of the reasons why he goes to his kind of like, his sort of go-to bits. Like, it's just his are fucking gross, right? But that's pretty sweet, you know. Promised infrastructure week after week after week. It's a good one, right? So, anyways. So, tr Trump um, is at his rallies. Instead of talking about those kind of things to kind of impress everyone with what he accomplished, he's showing these polling things, which is not about you feeling good. The polling is not about you feeling good because if I got a huge crowd of people in front of me, you should vote for me for what I'm doing and what I'm telling you I'm going to do and what I've accomplished, not on, hey, other people think I'm great, so you should too. That's the entire, I mean, that's the, the Trump mythology is based on that, right? Okay, same thing with if you're in a court case, and you're bringing in newspaper articles to prove you shouldn't be in court in the first place. Um, uh, yeah. Um, fuck you. Like that. It's a mistake. It's not. It's not the look you think it is. And here's his take a look. Well, uh, and oh, oh, don't worry. We shall. Here we go. This is him. And he walks out of court carrying them. I don't... Did he think he was going to, like, he wanted them put into evidence? So he had them with the shit? These are newspaper articles. These aren't These aren't the actual, you know, case filings or, or you know, legal briefs on his behalf. These people aren't writing legal briefs for him and, and wanting them presented to the court, right? Yeah. These are, these are people who side with him legally. We're going to be appointing very pro-crime judges. Um, who uh, don't think what he did was... Legal so. Yeah, look. Yeah. So he walks out carrying these fucking articles. We have a jury. <laughs> and they put him in this, like, little defendant petting zoo. <laughs> it's like... It's like a... It's like a fucking toddler bed. You know, it's like a little playpen for like, okay, don't let him walk down there. Don't let him actually get close. You know, <laughs> there's probably a fan blowing the smell that other direction too. So thank you very much. I wanted to just say that I'm supposed to be in New Hampshire. I'm All right. Well, uh, you've got a plane. Why the fuck are you stopping to talk to these assholes? It, you're in New York. 
New Hampshire's a fucking puddle jump, man. You could drive there and still make a nine o'clock rally. Tell them you're going to be there at seven. Walk on stage at 930. You've done it before. I'm supposed to be in Georgia. I'm supposed to be in... Also, uh, what, an hour and a half flight from New York? You've got a plane, motherfucker. North Carolina. Also, not that much further. What, two hours from New York? You could still make it. Bug the fuck out, man. They should just run you out of, like, think about, and I don't want to give this dumbass any ideas, but think how badass it would be if you had your own plane and you were a rich guy and you were like Mark Cuban, somebody like that was running and they had to be in court because somebody was going after them and then you knew it was, you're, you're like fighting it, but you know it's bullshit. You genuinely do. You don't go, oh, fuck, they got me and you're just telling everybody. You would... As soon as they're like, uh, where court is adjourned till tomorrow, get the fuck up, walk out the door, get in the truck, take him straight to his fucking plane. He can absolutely, because he was former, he's a former president, he can have a fucking bunch of cop cars in front of him, split in traffic, make him, make it so that he can get there. Oh, they used jury up and wait on YouTube last night? Okay, Groove Dragon, I'm sorry, I will, I, I will, I will swap that one out. I did not see that. So, um, anyways, I will, I'll move that around. Thank you for that heads up. Um, but in the meantime, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, if you were, if you're a, 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 I mean, again, we have to, there's a lot of assumptions. You have to be a real billionaire. You have to really be innocent and you have to really want to campaign. So let's assume that, and he says this, so let's assume he's not full of shit like every other aspect of his goddamn life. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you do that? I fucking would. I'd be like, clack out the fucking door, into the car. We got to make it. We're going to rally tonight and we're going to show everybody. And I'm not, and I'm not going to talk about the fucking case. I don't have to talk about any of it. I don't have to shit on the judge. I'm proud of our uh, judicial system in the United States. And I have faith that I will be found guilty by a jury of my peers anywhere in the country, even in a place where they didn't vote for me and they don't like me. I wouldn't talk shit about jurors or, or people working in the justice department because it's antithetical to who I am as a person. I'm busy selling my presidency. How hard would that be? I'm dead serious. You can you can be full of shit and still do that. <laughs> There's no reason why he couldn't be this way. You know what I mean? And it would be a winning way to go, but he can't. You know why? Because he'd have to be somebody else. He'd have to be you. He'd have to be me. He'd have to be an actual billionaire who actually wants to campaign, who actually wants to do the job of being president and, instead of just having the job of being president. South Carolina, I'm supposed to be in a lot of different places campaigning, but I've been here all day uh, on... Hey, you don't do daytime rallies anyways. And all those places are reachable right now. Just get the fuck out of here. A trial that really is a very unfair trial. Also, do all your rallies on Saturday and Sunday. All right, it'll eat into your golf. These are all stories. This is over the... These are all... And this... Okay. Say news reports. See... Is say articles. When you say story, it sounds like bullshit. Last few days. From legal experts. This is Wall Street Journal editorial. But all of these are stories from legal experts saying how this is not a case. <laughs> uh-huh. Let me guess. It's a printout of the same one and you're just realizing over and over again that, that Jonathan Turley released it in the Wall Street Journal and then they posted it on Yahoo News and it shows up on a bunch of other like, hey look, here I've got RT, I've got uh, N, the, the North Korean newspapers all have it. Um, uh, yeah, there's CCTV uh, online. This is the, uh, there's RT again. Uh, the case is ridiculous. Yeah, that was, is that a, uh, that's the headline? That's got to be, what, that's got to be uh, Waypo, right? They're going to be New York Times. The case is ridiculous. There's another one. The case is a ridiculous Trump indictment. It's missing fraud. There is no fraud. <laughs> that's, the, that's the headline? A little clunky. I'm just saying, as headlines go, I like mine a little, you know, tight. Uh, all of these uh, stories are stories of how and these are done by the experts <laughs> done by the experts written by legal scholars legal experts it, done by the experts i don't know what the fuck you're talking about i, I don't know this guy's a great chef he uh, 
It, this guy's an expert at running a Papa John's. Um, this guy is an expert at um, drugging uh, strippers who are having his baby and slipping them the abortion pill in a uh, in a smoothie. That guy, uh, I think he works for the campaign. Never mind. Anyways, it's still good. Expert at what? And the editorials. Brag for. That, by the way, they're all editorials, dum dum. By the experts. And the editorials. Brag falsified business record. And uh, he falsifies them. He's the. He does it. He falsified the business records. I didn't falsify business records. Bragg falsified business records. Bragg falsified the charges of my business records. He filled them out. He was my accountant for years. He's the fraud. But take a look at all of these are our stories. You see them here. It, it, were you showing them to your own attorney? Uh, yeah, I can see that. It's a picture of you and some black text at the top. You're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Bragg's indictment even falls as an indictment. Fails. Bragg's indictment even fails as an I it I guarantee the word wasn't false. That's that's not a lowercase L. That's an I. <clears throat> Gonna, gonna snap, aren't I? It's gonna happen. Uh, all of them. Greg crosses the Rubicon, indicting Trump on nonsense. The law really? That was the. That was what they said. Bragg cross that they. I guess maybe they used up all their ten cent words with Rubicon, and then they're like, I can't. Rubicon's too much for our readers. You cannot use two words like Rubicon. Um, so can you just say nonsense at the end? <laughs> the, who wrote this? Don Jr.? Whopping outrage in Trump's indictment. It's a whopping outrage and it is an outrage. Everybody. It's a, it's a whopping outrage? I, I hold on. I, uh, this is gonna like, whopping? Do you say fucking, do you say, do you say fucking whopping outrage? It's outrage, right? You know, we had 18 DA or DA types or close. We had eight. It's a whopping outrage. Hold on. It's a whopping outrage. The whopping outrage in Trump's indictment. It's a whopping outrage and it is an outrage. Everybody's outraged by it. <laughs> yes, especially the WAPs, I guess. What? What is a... <laughs> fuck is a whopping outrage? Oh, who writes that? That's not real. Whopping out, good lord. <laughs> my god, it, that, uh, that's a tarnation on my good, good record. You know, we had 18 DA or DA types or <laughs> DA types. What are you, fucking dick wolf? Close 18 or 19 or 21. If they counted all their in and out, like, and in the meantime, we have murders going on right outside in New York. Really? Well, I guess you're just, it's its so awful. I'm, I'm shocked that you, you, you got safely into that bodega. Look at this national review. Okay, apparently you didn't want us to look at that one. You, we got, you got to give us time. <laughs> it, it, it's like a whopper, yeah, a, a whopper of a legal case. Uh, maybe that was like a, a whopper of outrage. I don't even like those. I like fish delights. Another National Review. Uh, really? Shockingly, the National Review wrote it? It's not... A, you do realize the National Review isn't a review of all the papers in the nation, right? You, <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure he does. It's not... Hey, asshole. That's not the... The National Review... What? We have murders going on right outside in New York. Yeah, apparently these cops just don't care. There they are, armed, badges, and they're letting it happen. Right, so they just happened right outside, and these motherfuckers should be out on the street, but they gotta watch my dumb ass. I could have pled guilty and just gotten a fine and moved on, and then just bitched about it forever. 
Uh, what an asshole. Look at this. Okay, show it to me. Look, look at this. Okay, let's all, hey, let's all look at this. Title of this fucking video is look at this. Let's look at it. Yeah, show it. Okay, we're not gonna look at it. I guess we're not looking. <laughs> you're not even gonna let me look at the fucking thing? You say, you're gonna say, look at this, and then hide it? You, literally. Do you realize you just went, look at this, and then you, you hit it after you, are you, are you seeing this shit for the first time, motherfucker? Is that what's happening? I think it is. I think this is the first time you looked at it. If somebody... This fucker is queuing himself up for an Anchorman moment. If they put... If somebody put in there, guilty as hell, Trump is a sexual predator, this dumb motherfucker would read it out loud. He hasn't looked at this shit, and he certainly hasn't read any of these motherfuckers. you. Another National Review. Uh, Jonathan Turley. Another National Review. Another Jonathan Turley. All the legal experts in the world agree. But the only one we can find that writes this shit down is Jonathan Turley. Weird. You'd think with all the people that support you, you wouldn't even have to bring up the same name twice. Right? It's like, it's like, I got, what I got, it, right now in my chat room, I got about 3,700 people just in the chat uh, on, you know, a, across a couple of platforms. And it's like, if I went, I got over 3,000 people in my chat room. I got Andrea and, um, and, uh, you know, I, Andrea's there and I got, I mean, there's thousands of people and even more, you know, even outside it's packed everywhere that Andrea, <laughs> And by the way, Andrea, I'm sorry for using you as the example um, in terms of, you know, comparing you to Jonathan Turley. I mean nothing by it. Greg Jarrett, Andrew McCarthy. <laughs> the same people, Greg Jarrett, Andrew McCarthy, right. Every one of them saying they go The same thing that they say in the other, it's those three guys over and over again. The zombie case, meaning it is no case. I don't know, zombies, zombies are very real. I would, uh. I don't know. If there was a case that involved zombies, I think it'd be, we'd, uh, we'd all be, we'd be talking about trial of the century. And they can you give a dead man the death penalty? I mean, I can write the, I, I can write the pithy headlines myself. They say is it constitutional? They don't think the cases. These are all stories that have taken place over the last few days. Take a look at this. And, asshole, what, what do you think? The volume of stories about something and, and like, hunt, how about, how about this? In that stack, if, if Trump had to bring out all the stories that say Trump should go to jail and he should have, he's getting way more privileges than other defendants would get and he would have already been found guilty if he was anybody else and for some reason this motherfucker always gets a pass, Right? For, for like if he brought out those articles he'd need a fucking he'd need a forklift uh, da Bragg wants us to believe that his pursuit of trump isn't political of course it's political and they're doing it for biden they're doing this for joe biden I'm sorry. I just it just occurred to me. Do you, do you think this is where he thought he would be standing, and what he thought he would be saying in in 2016 when he won? Shit. Do you think even th in 2018 while he was president, do you think this is where he thought he would be today? Like if you went, hey, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> even the Rolling Stone, no friend of mine. Is that a Rolling Stone song that I'm up? Let me re let me check. Even the Rolling Stone said, "Oh, never mind." Anyways, they don't like it. Says they don't like Bragg's chances on this case. <laughs> not a, not that you're innocent, just that they don't like it. It's going to be difficult to prove. It's a disgrace. I don't think they said it's a disgrace. I don't think the disgrace. Part happened. Taibbi got fired from uh, Rolling Stone. He's not there anymore. He's got his he he he's got his appropriately named the Racket online magazine. He's back in the zine business. 
That's, that's a nice headline. I'd like to read that one, too. Not why didn't you really? It's a nice Atlantic article on you. You think you could read that one? Maybe you should read it before you say it. I, I don't. What, what was the what was the um headline on that one? You don't want to. Was there some reason you you just skipped it? It's weird. Every one of them lies about the case. Every one of these articles lies about the case. Wait a minute. Excuse me. You have a stack of articles that say that it's unconstitutional and you're innocent and it's a bullshit case and every one of them is lying? What? The, what? Wait. Hold on. Back the fuck up. I'd like to read that one too. But every one of them lies about the case. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, uh... Every, every one of them lies about the case. I, my only regret is you didn't open with that. Justice is on trial. You know, the whole world is watching this New York scam. The trial spectacle begins. This Wall Street Journal. <laughs> yeah, that... It, 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 I mean, you're the spectacle part, dum-dum. They said that about OJ, too. I'm sure you believe he's innocent. Was innocent. It's a spectacle. It's a, it's a spectacle. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's ex-spectacle? Is that a former spectacle? Spectacle begins. That's Wall Street Journal. It's a spectacle. It is expectacle. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know what to ask you to say. Ex-spectacle? Ex-spectacle? Ex Ex-testicle? The fuck? Say... Say spectacle again, you dumb motherfucker. Spec spectacle. It's spectacle, not ex spectacle. Ex 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 pecker stains. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> ex spectacle begins. This Wall Street Journal. It's a spectacle. It's a spectacle. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> This is how you can tell everyone around Trump hates him. Because I got news for you. If I was his age and in this situation, which won't happen, but let's say it was, and I was surrounded by folks that I had known for a long time or even people that I'd known for a reasonably short time or people who worked for me who were, you know, reasonably good at their job, they would have they would have said, before I even got to this point, they would have tapped me on the shoulder and went, Psst, wrap it up, we got to go. And I go, yeah, anyways, I don't have time for this. Fuck you. And I would have left before I said expectacle. While reading, clearly looking at shit I have never seen. New York scam. The trial spectacle begins. That's Wall Street Journal. It's a spectacle. Yeah, it's it's so it's so him, you know. Um, I know words. I have the best words. It's spectacle. I'm gonna have to grab that one later. Every one of these. <laughs> this is him looking at it for the first time. Don't do that fucking tongue wag, you creepy son of a bitch. That's just nasty. Why? Why would you do that? He can Ew. do things with his tongue you wouldn't believe. It. <laughs> ah, what? What? Do you, this. If is there another way to show that you have not even glanced at these fucking things? You just know that that whatever that like rent a stooge he has working for him that pulls you know stories that'll make him feel happy just gives him a stack of this shit. Spectacle. Every one of these. America is a third world country. <laughs> no, it is not. It is not. It's a ninth world. Country. A ninth world country, not a third world country. A ninth world third country. World. Third world country. Hey, uh, officer, uh, he's shitting on America. That's got to be illegal in Trump's America. Daily Caller. Do the Daily Caller. Thank God you finally found an unbiased source. Uh, and by the way, um, America was not a, a third world country before the Daily Caller when it came into existence. I, I got to say, it, it's probably their fault. What are you doing? Why the fuck? 
<laughs> Why are you reading this shit for the first time? You, what are you perusing this? This is your evidence, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he doesn't even know what it's gonna say. It's like, look, I have evidence right here. Of hey, that's it. You know, what does this one say? Ah, oh boy. <laughs> That's New York Magazine, even. All of them. They just. <laughs> That's New York Magazine, even. What does it say, dumb fuck? I don't care where it come from if I don't know what it's saying. I have papers printed out. This one's. Th this one's from the Farmer's Almanac. How do you fucking know? You don't know. You don't fucking know. According to the, harm, harm, uh, the, the Farmer's Almanac, the Harmus Almanac, the, <laughs> according to the Farmer's Almanac, it's going to be an early uh, summer. And, uh, this trial is a sham. <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, yeah, I think they printed him out just because these are the articles that have his, a big picture of him. Came out. These are all, every single one. I haven't seen one that says it's a good trial. Well, um, that wouldn't have anything to do with, like, somebody selecting the news that you see for you, right? That, I mean, um, it, it didn't have anything to do with, uh, you sure? No, hold on one second. Is it in this one? Yeah, there we go. At the, I'm fixing my title. Hold on. Update. Um, what the hell? Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> No one it's political, it's a, this is the Wall Street Journal editorial, and it's a shame, it's a shame. It is a shame it's a Wall Street Journal editorial. I mean, they used to, they used to be a good, <laughs> they used to be a good paper, I think. Shame, and I'm sitting here for days now, from more. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet, asshat. You've only, this is going to be weeks. Hunker down, motherfucker. Also, then leave. I wouldn't want to spend more than a minute in that fucking place, more than I had to. Jesus Christ. As someone who went through a prolonged custody thingy, if I never set foot in that fucking building ever again, it, it'll be too soon. Jesus. Leave. Morning till night in that freezing room. Freeze freezing? Freezing? <laughs> Everybody was freezing in there. <laughs> well, you know, maybe they turned the, the uh, you know, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but Letterman used to do this thing where he kept the, um, they, it kept the temperature in the studio cold so that it would keep people awake. Because, you know, people are more awake when it's cold. So maybe they, maybe they did that for, for you. It's freezing? And and what? It's grow the fuck up. All for this, and this is your. You're freezing for this. That not only am I innocent, but I'm freezing. <laughs> what the hell? The result. Look at that. Each one of them is story, and it's very unfair. Very bad thing. Very bad thing. The whole world is watching this hoax. You got a DA that's out of control. You have a judge that's highly conflicted. The oh whole God. thing is a mess. And you have the leading candidate and leading crooked Joe Biden by law. He's the one that should be in trial. He's a crook. You got a crooked president. He yeah, should really? be in trial with all the Why? stuff he's done and his family. He should be in trial. But he's the one in charge. His time. He should be in jail for going to church all the time and, and not actually being found guilty of anything. Uh-huh. You what now? How do you... How do, I thought this asshole was macho. Isn't that the whole point? People are here working with the DA's office to make sure everything goes right. Yeah, including the temperature. But it shouldn't go right because they have no case. Well, then if it goes right and they have no case and you'll be found innocent. That's that's what going right would be in this situation. That's what this is all about. And it really... What, making you cold? It really is a shame. 
It is a shame that they won't let you wear a shawl. This country is devolving into a third world country. Uh, I'm sorry, did we go out? Did we stop being a third world country for a while? Because I thought we, like two years ago, this motherfucker was calling this a third world country. That article said it we're a third world country. Is he calling bullshit on the articles he's using as evidence right now? I'm, I'm beginning to think he doesn't read anything. Um, but don't take my word for it. I don't read, obviously. Okay. Between having no borders, having... We have, we have borders, I'm just saying. If you're watching this in a foreign country, please don't listen to this man. You'll, you'll, you'll get arrested or deported. No justice. We have no justice and having a press. We have no justice, so there will be no peace. I've been trying to get a peace from Alina Haba this whole time, and she just won't put out. She, what I, what, right when I thought she, I was getting close, she flew off with a million dollars and had a birthday party in another country, and I can't even leave. That doesn't want to cover the facts. So thank you very much. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow. The juror called you selfish. Oh, 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 oh. How do you feel? Here, hold these. I didn't remember. I fucking forgot to read. I should have probably read the fucking story before I kind of fucking whatever. <laughs> no justice, no Greeks. Um. Or as my, my dear friend Chris Bono's joke goes, one of my favorite jokes of his, it was his opening line. He would come out and go, ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to be here tonight. And I just came from the bathroom. And let me tell you, Greece is the word. Yes, the joke is a little dated, but uh, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, anyways, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's his argument. He brought a bunch of articles to, to court. To say, by the way, um, all of these people, Jonathan Turley and uh, Andy McCarthy and whoever else, they could write briefs on his behalf to the court saying they don't believe it. And they could f file these. They could say, well, Your Honor, we would like to present these as evidence in this court hearing that this should not even be here. And this is our evidence. And we will appeal based on these ideas. But we want to present these. The, these are our legal, um, these are legal scholars that have written this for us. And uh, we're presenting. You could absolutely do that. You absolutely could. Uh, I guess the bigger question is, why the fuck won't they write that for him? I guess there's no reason why. I, I mean, if, if he asks when they have to do it, there's a, they're either not asking or they, those guys have refused. They'll write articles about it because those can be bullshit. If you're a TV lawyer, you can kind of bullshit your way around stuff and they make it a, you know, an argument. But you, as long as your opinions never get before a judge, who gives a shit, right? Now, speaking of uh, people who don't give a shit or we don't give a shit about, um, ladies and gentlemen, there was a, there's an, uh, there was a, a scary old man who uh, is in, I don't even know how to say this, Tulsa, Jerusalem, Tel Tulsa, Oklahoma, Slash Jerusalem equaling Tulsa Jerusalem. Tulsa Tulsa Jerusalem. Chachmed uh, Chalam Hachad. Laura Ingraham Tulsa Azra Chalam Hab. This is fucking weird. All right. So, anyways, he did an interview live at the Sheridan Church, and he brings up a really odd thing. And I I don't know if this is the part of it. I've not watched the whole thing, but because uh, I don't actually want to watch any of this. Now, granted. The, the, the church that he spoke at, um, I've, I've tried to have Giul Giuliani and some of these other folks on my show, and they won't show up largely because I don't have a big enough audience. That's what it is. That's what they say, essentially, is that I don't, I, I don't chart yet. So hit that like and don't forget to subscribe so I can get my numbers up so that they don't have that excuse anymore. But I would like to uh, just kind of call bullshit on it, if I may, because... Um, He's there, or whatever. The Sheridan Church, the whole place has 4.9 thousand subscribers. That's 4,900, just under 5,000. And this has nine, I mean, the irony that it has 911 views and it's Rudy. Like this motherfucker is like a noun, a verb, and 911 views. Um, this is him talking, I think, about the raid. I think I queued it up to the point because I didn't want to pre watch it, but let's see. Get away with it. Uh, so. Um... Now, 
once I realized what they were doing to him, I volunteered to represent him. That's the day they went and got my account. That's the day they started investigating me. Um, so this is when he was supposedly, I guess he's saying when he signed up to work for uh, Trump as a lawyer for free or some shit. At some point along the way, I get a knock on my door at five in the morning. It's the FBI. Right. They didn't want to have time to get rid of evidence. I used to kind of run the FBI. No. Uh, the former FBI agent is some of my best friends. Yeah. Mm, very former. I mean, we went through hell together. Did you really? I love the FBI. Uh, they were very nice. I mean, they were all a bunch of kids. And they um, by the way, uh, he shit on them at the time. He said they banged down his door and that they rudely awakened him and that they forced their way in and it was very unprofessional. He had to walk that back later, but he, he was, I guess he was very comfortable lying there, but now that, that he's in Tulsa, Jerusalem, he's making it up. So anyways, uh, by the way, hit that like while you're at it. It's a big good way or just the idea. And if you want to support the show, uh, patreon.com slash Al Sparks. I keep forgetting to say. They it. did treat me not, 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 they didn't do the, they didn't do what they do to the poor J6 people. Or, or how about the people that, that are getting. First of all, get longer socks or longer pants. I don't care which one you're creeping me out because uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm surprised there's not a doctor who's an expert in deep vein thrombosis who's actually in the audience. Secondly, they do that to some of the Jan Sixers because all of them are, are armed to the fucking teeth and bragging about it. Arrested now for protesting abortion. No, they're not. And they sent stormtroopers to arrest them. Yeah. Bullshit. No, they didn't. Don't say yeah. No, they fucking well did not. First of all, they weren't protesting. They were blocking entry, which is a violation of the law. And they were bragging about being armed and how we have to be armed when we do this because it's we're the army of God. That's different than just standing there or having a sit-in or making them drag you out. What are these people going to do? Shoot them? Yes. Fucking yes. That's what they say they're going to do. I mean, it, I don't know what's happened to the FBI. I really don't. Yeah, why don't they just let these people shoot them? Why don't they just walk up blindly and knock on the door at places like Ruby Ridge and Waco and just let themselves be murdered. I mean, we, we usually, I, I never remember having stormtroopers in the FBI. There weren't stormtroopers. These aren't stormtroopers. They were never stormtroopers. Even the people who came into your place weren't stormtroopers. Fuck you. And I arrested terrorists, not Nazis, uh, mass murderers, and, and mafia people. Right. But the U.S. Marshal did it, and you didn't arrest them at all. You didn't arrest anybody. The idea that this dumb motherfucker walked in there with like a six-shooter tucked into his belt like some gumshoe in the fucking 40s is nonsense. I never remember a guy in an arrest come going in with machine guns. Bullshit. Right, I mean, they're FBI agents. But they show up in my house. They didn't have any of those people. They had Right. Because the FBI showed up, they didn't expect you to open fire. They didn't have U.S. Marshals with them, and they didn't have SWAT with them. That's who those people are. This is just a fucking lie to shit on people working in the FBI right now. The, the, and by the way, we lost two FBI agents recently in Florida. They were, they were gunned down by a child pornographer as they were serving a warrant on him. They died in Florida. A man and a woman, both of them shot as they were serving a warrant on this. Maybe that's why. 10, about eight guys and two women. Mm -hmm. They searched my whole apartment. They had a search warrant for all my electronics. Your communication devices. Meaning cell phones. Da -da 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 -da. No. Uh, read the search warrant. We've all seen it. So I have, I, I have a lot of electronics in my apartment because at this point... I was doing my podcast there. I was doing uh, a Right. They didn't take your microphone because it's electronic. Your toaster, if it has a timer on it, is electronic. They didn't take that. They took your communication devices, anything that does email, anything that, that gets texts, anything that sends texts, anything with Telegram on it, that kind of shit. Not the storage devices, not your fucking iPhone cable. Not, you know, we, we talked about this when this actually happened. Uh, about a third of the time, I do my radio show at home going to the studio the other two thirds of the time. So I had- Right, they didn't take your mixer. They didn't take the, like- Had a lot of that electronic equipment also. And then I had 
have a lot of friends that come over and record there because I have access to, uh, to uh, Ethernet. And so they were taken like. What? You have access to Ethernet? You mean you have old hardwired shit in your apartment? So it's like a, just a podcasting hang. Uh, computers that belong to a friend of mine. Your ex-wife's computer that you stole from her that you were trying to get information off of so you could use it in your divorce. Uh, <laughs> a big, giant, old computer that belonged to my ex-wife. A giant, old computer. Wasn't that giant, motherfucker? It was hidden behind your couch. You hid it from her and from them. That she must have forgotten to clean out. Yeah, she forgot. She forgot to clean behind the couch and look for her laptop that you stole. I was wondering what the heck's on that. Yeah, I bet you, exactly. That's why you stole it. And um, <laughs> so they finish, they finish the search. They line up everything on my dining room table. All, they got about, I, I think about 18 or 19 pieces. So I, I said, I can help you identify them and just make it easier for you. So I say, well, this belongs to me. This belongs to my law, law, law partner. This belongs to so-and-so. Why do you have your law partner's phone? This is my or computer. I, this belongs to my ex-wife. This, this. this is your home, not your office. Why is why are their electronics, especially their computers, at your fucking place? Da, 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 da. We go. We get down to the very end because I kind of moved them around because I want I I wanted to just I said. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the only incriminating evidence you're going to find when you go through all this. They said, what is that? I said, well, I'll, I don't know. You can take either or both. The first one is Hunter Biden's uh, hard drive. <laughs> and... um, no, it isn't. Because allegedly the material came from a laptop and you do not have the physically removed hard drive at all so you're lying so a, a copy right a copy you curated of stuff that you are alleging is hunter biden's laptop and if they take it any case against him that they might have is gone also not a laptop a hard drive and yeah and it and it uh and it and it uh is edited because um we didn't want people that shouldn't to see the child pornography and the second one has the child pornography, which your bureau has had for two years and done nothing with. Aren't you ashamed of that? Yeah. And so let me, let me get this straight. You had copies of child pornography on a hard drive, multiple copies of a hard drive, because he had stacks of these. Remember when we heard this story the first time, which is all bullshit, but whatever. Remember when we heard this story the first time? There were four of them because he had copies, right? So this asshole has multiple copies of child pornography in his home. And he admitted that he had, he, he was trafficking child pornography because he was giving it out, right? He was giving out copies of this, allegedly. They said, oh, we, we don't want it. <laughs> now, uh, bullshit. Just bullshit. The idea that they're like, oh, we don't want it. Okay, first of all, uh, for the record, um, again, it would if they had a, a case against Hunter Biden and they took possession of these drives and took them at face value, the 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 chain of evidence on them was so bad because it was Rudy Giuliani and they were found in his place that it would the fruit of the poison tree would get everything that they found out after that thrown out because if they found out anything about Hunter Biden after they had received those hard drives, uh, a, a first year law student could get the entire thing thrown out because fruit of the poison tree. And Rudy, if he was an actual lawyer and an actual former DA instead of a, a you know, a, a, an agent for the fucking Russian and Chinese mob in New York, would know this. Actually, they violated the search warrant. The search warrant said all electronics. No, it did not. And hard drives aren't electronics. Now, I had a... It's, a, it's communication devices. It was not all electronics. Bullshit. It, it, the warrant would not let them take his fucking television set. The warrant would not let him take his Wi-Fi router. The warrant would not let him let, let them take his fucking, if, if he had a, I don't know, if his microwave was programmable. Shut the fuck up. Now that copy in a safe, so <laughs> I didn't really care if they took it. But so you had multiple copies of child pornography in your house. Cool. But uh, And you looked at it. You looked at the stuff and you kept it. You still have it.
presumably to this day. So right now, if somebody was to get a warrant for Rudy Giuliani and search his safe, they would find that he is a hard drive with child porn on it in his home. The question is, is that the only hard drive he has with child porn on it in his home? They, they, they wouldn't take it. Wow. They wouldn't take wow. the, uh, uh, the Hunter Biden hard drive. There's some kind of thing of the FBI protecting Biden. I'm still, I still, I still haven't gotten to the bottom of it. That's because you're stupid. I, I, and I should say, um, I just wanted to show everybody that little chunk, uh, just because if you'll recall, I, when this, sh this first, this story started, he started bullshitting about this a long time ago. I was like, hang on a second. Rudy Giuliani is copying and distributing child porn. This is just illegal straight up. Um, it, it, even if you tried to make the case that it was originally Hunter Biden's, it doesn't matter if you're copying it. It's like, it, that's like, I don't know being in a car that was just involved in a robbery and claiming you're kidnapped afterwards when you have, you know, a gun with fingerprints and, and you were caught on tape arguing about your cut of the money. It's just bullshit. But, and I brought this up when, when this happened, when he was raided and he was like, there were copies and they didn't want it. And he's been telling this story for a while. Um, I would be glad to explain this to this dumb motherfucker um, and to anybody who would, be willing to listen. And the irony is, is that it would be to their benefit to understand that the fruit of the poison tree aspect of that hard drive and the fact that there is no chain of evidence and it would all be thrown out and there's no metadata on it. It was a, even the Washington Post who tried to bullshit their way through it, found it was said it was a forensic nightmare, their copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of allegedly shit that was illegal and, and you know, revenge porn and you know, like, uh, un, you know, nudes uh, of people that were taken, which is, a you know, violation of multiple laws of privacy and the like that they released out into the public. Um, this would benefit them not to step away from this. Yeah. So, uh, but he never will. So maybe I'll have to call into his show, I guess. Is that what I'm going to have to do? And and, and I, I would go, uh, so you have a copy. Do you have multiple copies of that hard drive with the child porn on it? So you have multiple copies of hard drive with child porn on it in your possession. You are in possession. Hmm. Hmm. Odd. Anyways, now, uh, on that note, let's have a lighter moment, if we, uh, if we will. Um, friend of the show, Jamie Raskin, who, uh, uh, for the record, has told me I'm hilarious and brilliant um, after seeing me do stand-up. So, you know, for the record, it wasn't even just this. It was on top of him seeing, you know, my my primary talent. But Hal, I thought your primary uh, talent was being charming and good-looking. Well, I understand. I understand how you could think that. But uh, in this particular case, um, it was he came to the, um, the DC Sexy Liberal show and we talked afterward. He's lovely. Um, and I'm glad he made it through his cancer just fine and he's still with us. And I still feel for him and the loss of his son. It was just, that was heartbreaking. He's a good dude, good, good human being. It was a nice conversation. That said, um, this is, this little exchange I have heard a lot about, but I have only gotten to see like uh, a minute of it, um, from online. So, but this is nine minutes. These, these guys are going back and forth. Here we go. Um, this is hearing descends into absolute chaos as Raskin and Comer go nuclear on each other. <laughs> Let's go. Chair now recognizes Mr. Raskin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Professor Snyder, what role does political and financial corruption play in the authoritarian regimes like China and Russia? It it always plays a very fundamental role, as we discussed before, in recruitment, but it also plays an ideological role. Since the basic argument is that democracies are just hypocrisy, everyone is based. By the way, this is what Phil and I always talk about. Phil, if you'll recall on the show, it's nice to see this being talked about in the House right now. We yeah. corrupt. Only money matters. Corruption is used not just as a way to bring in individuals, but it's also used as a way to discredit the entire system. And internally, those regimes are based on corruption. 
And so the point externally is to normalize that. Back in the 20th century, we had rivals that had other visions of the future. Now we don't. Now we have rivals, and this pertains both to China and Russia, whose main message is that our system isn't what it seems to be. There are really no alternatives to just autocratic regimes where only money and power count. One of our colleagues chided uh, our side of the aisle for raising Donald Trump's name. I think that was presumably directed at Representative Norton, who discussed the millions of dollars that Donald Trump uh, pocketed in unlawful foreign government emoluments from the Chinese government and from the state-owned ICBC bank while he was president. Uh, is corruption in America irrelevant to our ability to withstand foreign propaganda by authoritarian regimes like China and Russia? Of course it's not irrelevant, it's very relevant. The way that any kind of political warfare proceeds is by these sorts of connections. A message becomes more plausible because a person is a bit more corrupt, a person is a bit more corrupt, a message becomes a bit more plausible. Anyone who is serious about political warfare would be very attentive to these underlying financial issues, of course. Um, but one of our colleagues uh, mentioned an effort that is underway um, to stop U.S. government agencies from blowing the whistle on Chinese and Russian propaganda on social media. There are some people who say that it violates the First Amendment if our agencies say there's Chinese propaganda uh, on your website, there's Russian propaganda on your website. Well, what do you think about that? Do you think that in a free society, the government should be able at least to alert the social media or private internet service providers about the existence of foreign government propaganda uh, on their vehicles? Colleagues in different ways have already raised the point that, it's, that, that TikTok is not the only problem. The problem is the way that social media is designed as such. Democracies tend to work better when institutions are set up in such a way that factuality has an advantage over propaganda. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. social media is set up in a different way. It gives an advantage, a financial advantage for advertisers to attention seeking and therefore to shocking propaganda. We know that this can be mediated because when it has been, when attempts have been made either by corporations themselves in cooperation or by the government, we have been able to dramatically reduce, yeah. to reduce hostile state sponsored propaganda. What we face now in 2024 is a major corporation, Twitter, which has chosen not to police itself even as much as the other platforms do. And therefore, we face a situation with TikTok is malware. Which states are taking advantage of this sort of chaos. Hostile actors take advantage of this chaos to change the information environment. This is par excellence an example of psychological warfare, and it would be foolish if the United States government did not allow itself to draw attention to it. I wonder if you can help us figure out where we've come as a committee, Professor Snyder. About a year ago, our GOP colleagues began heralding an FBI form FD-1023. Ouch. Oh, he had to go there, didn't he? That recorded Is that what sets this off? allegations that President Biden acted corruptly in Ukraine uh, and tried to promote these as credible allegations. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out that these were lies and the person who was promoting them has been, has been indicted for lying to the FBI and constructing a false record. By the way, just for the record, uh, this audio is mono for some reason. It's all in the left side. So I apologize to anybody that is getting a weird, like just out of one speak. That's how this is. I have a stereo feed out of the show. And, and so if you're, getting, if you're watching this in stereo, it's going to be all to your left for whatever reason. I, it's, it's something either with Forbes or with uh, the house recording. It turns out that uh, he was uh, the, uh, up to his neck in connections to Russian foreign agents, and right. yet our colleagues at various points called this a, a smoking gun, said it showed proof that the Bidens took bribes and so on. Um, w Chairman uh, Jason Smith, for example, said this was a smoking gun, and it was the definitive proof that, uh, that the Bidens took bribes. Um, it's obviously been dropped. And by the way, look at the... The, the number of views on this. You get a quarter of a million fucking views on this thing boast, boosting the 1023. That was in July of last year. And yet, this was the genesis of... Also, by the way, for the record, Jason Smith is one of the assholes responsible for the FBI looking further into it and getting this guy sent to jail in the first place. So, you know, they stepped in their own of shit. Of our investigation, 
Um, how do we that's, understand? That's just simply not true. But go whoops, wait a minute. Did he he just jumped right in there? You can't. You're not watching TV at home, dumb fuck. of our investigation. Um, how do we that's, understand? That's just simply not true. But go ahead. I'll, I'll yield to the story. chairman if you no, want to no, take some more no, time. No, no, no. Well, well, you, you can use are your you time. Are saying the bank statements are Russian disinformation that the Bidens took nine thousand dollars from oh, China? Oh, I agree. You've been nine thousand dollars from China. I think he means nine million dollars from China, but they didn't. And and uh, but nine thousand. Uh, even even then, Biden's getting to be a, a cheaper date. Talking about bank statements for more than a year, but they don't show anything other than there was no crime. So well, it's well, okay. It's okay show? for, as Tony Bobolinsky said, for China to bribe Joe Biden's family with. No, it is not okay for Tony Bobolinsky to lie under oath. Nine million dollars. But that's the lie that's been described. Yeah. Oh, somebody jumped in and told him nine million. Do you see that? Watch. He says nine thousand. No so well, it's well, okay. It's okay show? for, as Tony Bobolinsky said, for China to bribe Joe Biden's family with nine million dollars. But that's the yes, lie that's been described. Bank bank statements are to the chairman. If you no, want to no, take some more no, time, no, no. no. Well, well, you, you can use are your you time. Are saying the bank statements are Russian disinformation that the Bidens took nine thousand dollars? Oh, China? I agree. You've been talking about Tony bank Bobolinsky statements for more than a year, but they don't show anything other than there was no crime. So well, it's okay. It's okay show? for, as Tony Bobolinsky said, for China to bribe Joe Biden's family with nine million dollars. But that's the lie. And somebody leaned over. That's to him. been discredited. There's the hand walking. Moving I mean, well, where is your impeachment investigation? If Donald, if Joe Biden took a nine million dollar bribe from China, why aren't you impeaching him for that? Well, who, who says we're not? Well, everyone. I, I can I can invite Mr. Moskowitz to come back in. Do you want to move for impeachment today? Because I thought that that was your main agenda item. You said it was the paramount priority of the committee. No, the, this is a, a hearing on China. It's about China. China money is last week. This is just China. Next week, we're going to be talking about chins. After that, just ch. And you all have a, an obsession with Russia and Trump. It, it's disturbing. We can talk you about need China therapy. and Trump or Russia you all and Trump. Need, He's got a therapy. Mr. Raskin. No, no, you, you need therapy. You're the one who's involved with the deranged politician, not me, okay? I, I've divorced myself from Donald Trump a long time ago. You're the one who needs to disentangle from that situation. And, and I will tell you this, if you believe that it would have been illegal for Joe Biden to take $5 million from mm. Ukraine, it certainly would have been. What do you think about Donald Trump taking more than $5 million from the Chinese government while he was president? Well, we, we know that Donald Trump had a legitimate business that he talked about and he campaigned the on. The legitimate business what, was what the is, White House. What business, he sold the White House. Let, what, oh, give me a break. He, he was what, president. What business, was the Biden, what business were the Bidens in? But look, it's easy. Trump was in the empty hotel room business. I mean, how... What the ch are you trying to tell me that the Chinese government can or or the Russian government or the Saudis or just anybody can doesn't have the right in America to rent I don't know 50 empty hotel rooms? I mean, is this America or what? Well, what, what business did Joe Biden's family own? What business were they in? Did they have hotels? Did they have wait. a social media company? Did they have golf? Did they have a, he didn't have a social media company then. And also, uh, he's not going to have one for long. We, we haven't even done a check-in yet. Of course is. Did they have casinos? Did they have office Mr. They do not have casinos. Trump doesn't have casinos either. Mr. Chairman. What business? Did they really, he brought up casinos? He brought up casinos. He really did? They have well, an Mr. Company. Chairman, we have spent tens of millions of dollars you pursuing we have, Joe Biden, and you have not true. identified a single a crime. You are really? lying. That really? is a lie. We have not spent $10 million. Hey, how much have you spent? We, have, we haven't spent hardly anything. Oh, it's been for free. Okay. All right. Well, in any event, it's, it, well, you know what? Then we get what we just, paid for because you got nothing. <laughs> that you is, got nothing no, on Joe well, Biden. No, no. Answer you, this question. Not named a answer this crime. question. No, you what did the Bidens do? What business were they in? Why but did what, they? Uh, hey, I like. Wait, I would like to say, uh, um, Congressman Raskin, uh, ranking member, um, uh, or, or you know, the, uh, the gentle person from Maryland. Um, I like Comer's question here. I think it's a great question. What did Joe Biden do 
to get all that money because he certainly, it certainly isn't doing Russia or China any favors right now. What'd he do? Why, if, I mean, unless the CCP and Russia are just that pervy that they are, you know, paying Joe Biden to skull fuck them economically, um, th that they just like getting their balls spanked with a riding crop, metaphorically, um, right? What, what'd they do? What did they do? Because I, I know they were trying to start an energy company or they were trying to um, set up a secondary energy company that would buy a, a, a natural gas refinery in the United States. Those kind of things do business in the United States. They were trying to bring that foreign investment into the United States. That seems to be the entire f crux of it all. Um, in the case of uh, Burisma, they were just overwatching the, the investor's money and getting a fee for doing that. Um, but if you're going to allege that they did something for that money on behalf of these governments, then name it. That's the crime. That's why there isn't one. Say it. What the fuck was it? Because it, it's it's beyond. They don't. They've this is a huge investigation. They've got nothing. Which I appreciate Raskin for bringing that up. But it's even worse than that. They don't even have an example of policy that changed to benefit these countries. And as a matter of fact, they have a lot of evidence of the exact opposite. China is fucked right now. Russia has only gotten more sanctions on top of sanctions, on top of sanctions. The, uh, there is no beneficiary in all this. And even in the case of like U Ukrainian funding previous to that, it's a different leadership. We are supporting the democratic Ukraine versus the Russian sock puppet Ukraine. That, of Yanukovych, for example. Can I, can I answer that? Millions and millions of dollars. Where, no, I, I would like can to ask I you a question. No, you start. What okay. did the Bidens do? The, the Bi I don't know what who you're talking were they about. In? Well, what Biden, what business is, is the Comers what? in? You're talking about lots of people. There's lots of people in the family. I'm a farmer. You're in I have land. land. I you're in I'm a farmer. I have land. Some of it is my brother's. I have, uh, you know, shuffle it around. I got a lot of money left to me by my dad. I, I used it to buy more land in an area where land is cheap. And, and I, you know, view, and then I, and then I screwed my brother out of it. That's my business. Land, I sell hay. Must identify what a did high Biden crime. Do? Did he just say, I sell hay? He just said, I sell hay. He's saying that that's. That you're a farmer. And what do you say? I have land. I you're in land. I sell hay. Must. Yeah, I, I have land, I lease land, I sell hay. You know, the kind of crop we can't live without as human beings. Must identify what did a the high crime do? and misdemeanor. What did they I do? I, I sell the dead grass from my property. I'll tell you what Joe Biden did. Other people lease it from me and they gather it. I don't even know how it works. He was a senator of the United States. Then he wrote a book and he said he made the most money ever made in his life, millions of dollars on his book. And he gave a million dollars. That's what his charity. family did. That's, that's what, what, what hunt. That's why Ukraine, uh, Kazakhstan, Romania, China, Russia. That's why they paid the Biden family money because of Joe None Biden. None of those what? governments they, paid anyone any money. So, somebody needs therapy here, but it's nobody on our side of the all aisle, right, okay? All right, because enough. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm, I lost. No, I, 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 tap out. Literally, that's, that, that is the congressional version of a tap out. Raskin, congratulations. You, uh, you, you won, uh, by submission. Back to the hearing. Back you, to the you, you had hearing. your chance. Order, I, order. I would like my time restored. Uh, well, well, no, your time was I would expired. Like you, I no, you, you interrupted me. Oh, I want no, my time restored. you restire. had your time. You went above, and I let Miss Thornton go a minute. You know what? Uh, here, yeah. sit down, everybody. Come back. This is about China. <laughs> what the hell? Come back. Everybody's leaving. This is still a committee hearing shit. We asked to. I gotta say, this is the closest thing to any of us, uh, you know, watching something that happened in the fucking like early 1800s in the government. I gotta go. I got chickens. You put it. Sit down. We're gonna. We're not doing chicken business right now, son of a dog doodle. You move back in here. We we have not had a motion. Where the fuck are you going? The British are coming. Said a dad, he's having flashbacks. Shit. Simple question, no. Miss Presley, you're out of order. Sit down. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. No. Mr. We chairman. Now, who's talking? I just, somebody's calling me chairman and I like it, but I'm, you know, as soon as I see their face, I'm not going to like it anymore. China money.
Mr. Chairman, Mr. can I make a motion that we um, we take a break? Take a pee break, break for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, can we go pee? Actually, I got to tell you, I need to smoke a cigarette after that because it was so exciting. I should be running this fucking committee if there, if there was any justice in the world, and you're a complete dumbass. So I, even though you're on my side of the aisle, I, I have to say I'm enjoying quite thoroughly watching uh, uh, Mr. Raskin uh, uh, choke you blue. By the way, you said 9,000, and we fixed the 9 million or whatever, but you, there's a bunch of other shit you said. The, the, we'd already solved this. We've had people come in and... The transcripts are online. Everybody knows that it, it, Hunter, nobody from got money from Alina Boutina. Like that, that's done and dusted. They've, they've seen the, the Devin Archer testimony. Everybody knows. Yeah. I don't know why you keep bringing this shit up. We've talked about it. I don't know, whatever. I don't think we're going to keep going. Uh <laughs> yes, we are. Um, by the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. We're going to keep going. We're no, no, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Um, now I, uh, I gotta say, I gotta tell you folks, um, where are we? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Did the robot. There you go. Mm -mm -mm. Now we have revisited. I, I don't know for whatever reason, um, fucking Glenn Beck is on this red heifer shit again. So apparently there, uh, a red heifer has been delivered to Israel and is going to be slaughtered as part of a, uh, you know, a sacred ritual to make magic rocks more magic. Um, and uh, apparently it means the end of the world. If they do it, if they're unsuccessful, the world is fine for a little. It's like uh, the red heifer is, um, think of it as the gopher of the Armageddon. If he gets slaughtered, uh, six more millennia of life. And if he, if he doesn't, then, or no, if he doesn't get slaughtered, six more millennia of life. And if he does, uh, then um, pack your skis. We're leaving. So uh, this is the red heifer. For those of you that are just joining us and have not uh, do not understand the red heifer prophecy, here it will be explained. And and I'm so glad, you know. Now I know what you're thinking. I I know I know a lot of you are thinking fuck Glenn Beck. No, but I mean the other ones. The other ones of you are thinking how. Why would they be talking about this when they could be talking about Donald Trump's uh, hush money case? It's obviously on, you know, it's a major news story. It's the first former president's ever been tried criminally. He's in court every day. There's obviously updates to talk about. There's a, it could, that you could do, if you, you know, if, especially if you're on his side of the aisle and you're there to defend him, you could, your whole show could just be all day, every day, backing him up, right? I don't know why, with your viewers, being big Trump lovers, uh, why you wouldn't want to just talk on and on about the case of him paying off a porn star that he that he laid on top of for three minutes during Shark Week and went like like he popped a dick zit uh, and then was done sadly and then it cost him one hundred thirty thousand dollars to keep it from the the voters and and then his wife was at home with their five month old at the time you know why why wouldn't you want to talk about that all day every day. Why, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to just, why would you want to talk about red heifers and the end of the world when you could be talking about that? I, I can't imagine. I'm completely puzzled. Bill Cloud is uh, with us. He's from Shoreshim Ministries. He's the founder of that and Jake. Shoreshim Ministries. Oh, that's the place that was based on the old church that was sliding into the river, but everybody came down there with their blessed shims and uh, kept it on the shore where they could sell seashells to Jesus. Gibbs Tent Fellowship. Jesus sells seashells by the sea shore shim. Founder. Uh, uh, welcome to the program, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you today? Very good. I'm not, by the way, Bill Cloud is not my real name. Um, I took that name when I was taking up in the real rapture. Sorry you were left behind, you sinful loser. It's good to have you on again. So, good to be on what? Here. Um, tell me the, the red heifer thing. I heard back in the 90s, I think it was, Mm -hmm. People were talking about the red heifer. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was uh, that was a um, wasn't there a uh, Temple of the Dog song about that? Her, the red heifer, the red heifer. Yeah. 
ah, something like that. I can't remember. Wasn't it? Is it no, it was a Creed song. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Or was it Striper? <laughs> Calling on you, Red Heifer. You know, they're rare, but I think there was a, a I think it was an American farm, maybe Florida. I'm not, rem I, I can't remember. Yeah, it's obviously a big red heifer farm in Florida. Remember. Yeah, the Holy Land. That had a bunch of red heifers. Yeah, it was the red hot chili heifers. You're right, guys. That's right. And they sent them over to Israel. Is that right? It, well, yeah, uh, I think the uh, it was from Mississippi was the farm. Yeah, that makes more sense, Mississippi. Anyway, okay. I don't remember that. But anyway, it was back in the late 90s, 97. And there was one. Where they used to uh, they'd make fun of people by calling them red heifer stepchild. One red heifer. They even named her Melody. And I think they put her on the cover of. <laughs> yeah, and tried to marry her. It's, you know, it's Mississippi after all. Newsweek or Time or something like that. Yes, it was lovely. It was, you know, unfortunately, you know, gay marriage came along and ruined all the animal marriages we were doing in Mississippi because we couldn't argue slippery slope if we'd gone there first. But anyway, you know, it created a big stir about the red heifer and the red heifer. It did. I remember that. You guys remember that, right? I mean, it was like, obviously, the L.A. riots and the earthquake there and and uh, my sex life uh, ate up a lot of my, you know, um, attention at the time. Um, but I think I remember saying something, something, something. Heifer is connected to the idea of the possibility of a rebuilt temple. And, and so, yeah, there was a lot of chatter back as far back as the late 90s. Yeah, you know, basically biblical times. So. Okay, so there's been nine red heifers that have been sacrificed since... Weird. Do the Germans know? Moses. And that's to purify the the temple? Yeah, it did, it did a great job. It's one of the purest, most uh, violence-free places on the... Uh, I'm sorry, what? It did not work. It did not... <laughs> didn't take it all. As a matter of fact, the last time they did it, it was... That's when it came down. Okay, well, sorry. Well, the, the red heifer is basically, thematically, it's the antidote for the golden calf. The golden calf is... The antidote for the golden calf. So you have a golden calf, which you could melt down and use as currency, I suppose, versus a, a red... Heifer. We have a golden calf. It's not... It's off gold. It's a ginger calf. You know, about rebellion, death. Moses has that ground into powder, mixes it with water, the people drink it, that identifies who's guilty, death. The red heifer, it's burned, the ashes are collected, it's mixed with spring water or pure water, and then the, those who've been contaminated, and particularly with you know, contact with something that is dead, you're purified. Mm, I don't think that's actually how it works. <laughs> I don't... Um... I wouldn't try that at home. I would just say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is not medical advice in any way. I would not recommend this. Just coming in contact with something, checks notes, that's dead, doesn't, does not indeed purify you at all. And your cleanse ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, I've never had a red heifer anima, but I'll defer to Bill Cloud. And so the idea is that um, you can approach God. Where before with the golden, golden calf, I'm not going to go with these people. If I go with them, I'll have to kill them. They're so stubborn. But then he made allowances. And so it it is for ceremonial cleansing. And yeah, I'm going to go with superstitious bullshit um, that has nothing to do with faith for uh, 300, Alex. In order to approach God. So that's... It's... The heifer is red. The calf is golden. But the cleansing is real. Nah. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about, Alex? That's uh, 300 points. Thank you. I'll take... Uh... Important in relation to the rebuilding of a temple because they don't have a temple at this point. Religious Jews see the temple as the uh, manifestation of God's presence on earth. They... Which, again, magic rocks a little... Want to be able to approach God in that regard. And... Right. Um... And obviously, God, one of, the, one of the ways you know it's God is that he can't be everywhere at once. <laughs> Nothing says God like geographical limits. So the ashes of a red heifer 
with the waters of purification are essential if things are going to be cleansed. The temple mm. mount, all the I didn't realize that red heifer is the best antiseptic. Utensils, all the implements that go into the sanctuary and the people who go up to the temple mount. Okay, so, okay, that's really. I, I got to say that's pagan as fuck. So in a nutshell, in in uh, I in a nut case, I think I would yeah. I think it was on the hundredth day anniversary of uh, October seventh. Um, Hamas came out and they talked about really the red heifer and said that the Jews yeah. are going to start purifying the Temple Mount and you know this is a, an act of war and they knew exactly what the red heifer meant. Yes, they're they're, they're two psychotic religious groups who are dealing in murderous superstitions that have nothing to do with the root faith of their belief systems and yeah that's that be the um, that'd be the part where geography matters but cuz uh, i don't know about you but uh, i don't i don't think it's god unless you can take it with you <laughs> just yeah we've had a red heifer before it was a little stringy though i got to say it was gamey Maybe it was the sauce. Maybe it was overcooked. It's hard because Thanksgiving is always a weird holiday around our, 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 you know, mainly because it's so hard to find a red heifer. Why have we not? Why did they not? Why is there still war? Why are we still here? Why is there not? Why haven't we been raptured yet? We did the red heifer thing and obviously it, it didn't take. Not use that red heifer and make that to 10th. And yeah, I don't understand. And why is well, why didn't it work? This one s- s- supposedly the tenth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who's been keeping count, anyways? I, how do how do we know their numbers are good? Ten commandments, ten heifers. I mean, come on. Well, the one that I referred to in, from ninety seven, you know, they were watching it, but it it actually grew. It died of natural causes. Grew some hairs that were you know were different color because this. Oh, that's yeah, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm going to take that as, uh, that sounds like God's work right there. God's like, why are you fucking the asshole's going to kill this? All right, two black hairs. Fuck. Would you stop already? Red heifer has to be entirely red. There can't be. Mm-hmm. Even around the genitals. Later, I suppose you're going to need a magnifying glass to, ch- to check. Um, hairs of a different color, which is, you know, why it would make it so rare. Right. Yeah. So my and ridiculous my understanding is at this point among these red heifers, I'm beginning to think God is just procrastinating at this point. Like he just doesn't want to come back. They feel like they have some that are still qualified, you know, that would be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the good ones. eligible to be, you know, slaughtered and burned, et cetera. Yeah, but will the Guinness Book people get down there to help make it happen, or who? Who's checking the really small hairs, really the ones close to the butthole? Shit! What? Is it a guy red? Are all the hairs red, or did you find a black one? No, it's shit! I'm at it. I'm looking at his butthole with a magnifying glass. Of course, there's sh- shit. Somebody give me some more baby wipes. I can't check all these. Hairs. Oh, there's one on the tail. Fuck. We got to start from scratch. Which number is that? That's two. God damn it. Can we call him number two? He's shit everywhere. So, um, yeah, as far as the Muslim world, and particularly, you know, the, the likes of Hamas and Hezbollah and people like that, um, that that's going to get them up in arms. And so that's, that's, I would say that that's what makes them. Yes, they've got, they've got secret uh, Hamas spies sneaking in there with, uh, with uh, just for men. And like a teeny little glove, like a little tiny thing of just for men hair dye, just trying to get close and just right next to, the, and right near the butthole. So they're like having to look and look and look, and then like, oh, there it is. It's super small. Like that's a, just make them look as long as possible. Ah, three hours I worked on that butthole, and there was the one I missed. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. A little different is that they're reportedly among these red heifers, some that they feel are qualified. Uh huh. To be wives or to be slaughtered. For- I see. Qualified to be slaughtered. Congratulations, you qualify. Yay to be slaughtered. Fuck. Why? Because you're a genetic anomaly. Oh, I see. That that's good. So 
you bigot. That purpose. And they've already built um, the... Uh, the slaughter machine? Uh, the ramp, I guess, to the altar, and they've mm -hmm. built an altar, which I don't know if that's been done before. And they're claiming... Well, yeah, this is... Um, by the way, um, the I think the rabbi in charge has to be a direct descendant of evil Knievel. <laughs> Um, and then the, ironically, the red heifer has, has to leap over a pit with a shark in it. Um, I don't think Henry Winkler is available. So they're just going to have one of those like, uh, celebrity lookalikes. That before, um, the Passover somewhere, you know, around this time. Yeah. They have a wheel they spin to decide when. That they're going to. It's called a, um, uh, what's it called? It's called a clock. To slaughter the heifer and burn the heifer ceremonial. Ceremonial. Ceremonially, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not just going to do it lackadaisically. Well, from what I... As I understand, they they slaughter it whimsically, and then they burn it lackadaisically. It's a... It's, it's I don't know. It's in Exodus. I understand. Well, let me back, backtrack just a minute. An altar... Who makes the sauce? There, there were people who had uh, built, quote-unquote, altars in times past. Uh, really? You don't say. To make a statement, a political statement. I mean, 67, religious Jews have been pushing to rebuild a temple. Mm -hmm. um, in 1990, I was in Jerusalem at the Western Wall and a group. And he's a redhead. So I, I wouldn't, if I was him, I would fucking, I wouldn't be anywhere near that place. Group that wants to see the temple rebuilt. I'm dead serious. Like, you know, heifer, red is meaningful, but heifer is a, is a figure of speech. That's why Trump left so fast. Came in with what? Orange doesn't count, though. So he was what fine. they said was going to be the cornerstone of the temple, and it was it was symbolic. It was a protest. It was saying, "Hey, we're here. We're going to push for this." Real quick, um, if I if I don't mind, or if you don't want, um, isn't it all symbolic? So through the years, there because it's not. I mean, it's not math, and it's not science. It's it's technically symbolic. It is literally it represents the alternative to the golden calf it's a it's <clears throat> it does there's no red heifer dust does not serve as medicine it's just it's symbolic there have been different things that have happened and it seems to that is true though i i no no lies detected there in in jerusalem there have been different things that have happened which you cannot say about anywhere else on earth to me it's particularly around the time of Passover when you hear all this chatter, and also in the fall feast around the feast. Oh, so it's chatter. Okay, so it's just chatter, is it? Okay, Bill Cloud from uh, Shine, Shim, Sham, Flim Flam Ministries. It's just, oh, just chatter. Okay, I guess the New Testament is just chatter then. I guess the Ten Commandments are just fucking yip yap. Just tabernacles. So as far as this altar, I've heard rumors. I haven't seen anything that's abs absolutely verified. But yeah, they, 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 like the the closest we have was when uh, I've got to go with Ben Shapiro bought a piece of wood at a Home Depot and carried it home in a bag to prove that he could get an erection. But I don't think that was part of this at all. I think, I mean, I if I was him, I would insist that piece of wood be mailed to the Holy Land in case they're short. You know, boy, wouldn't that be embarrassing? You build this whole ramp up there and and you're you're just this close to the altar and the cow can't make it or whatever and then here comes little benny shapiro to just jump in there with this one piece of wood that fits perfectly <laughs> whack crackle crackle puff i can see god no this is sorry we didn't cook it long enough it's, it's you're poisoned but here's the issue if a group okay. of here a uh, sorry Here's the issue. The people have red heifers and even go so far as to slaughter it and burn the ashes. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be accepted by the, you know, the greater religious community? Right. Mm -hmm. the, the greater religious community? Gosh. Hmm. I'm going to go with no. Depending on what you mean by greater, you mean like all the other religious people in the world except the people who do this? Nah, no, no, no. Yeah, you got to burn the ashes. I mean, yeah, you're, it, first you have to kill the heifer and then make charcoal briquettes and then burn the briquettes and then roast, uh, make a make a nice pot roast 
And um, um, that's uncertain, frankly. Yeah, it is. I agree. It's that is up in the air. Because who so, has I mean, the who has the authority? Yeah. Certainly not God, or he wouldn't have put two black hairs on the butthole of the last one, right? I mean, uh, 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 real quick, um, if God w- wants this done, couldn't he just, and I know I'm spitballing here, work with me on this. I, I apologize if I'm getting too ahead of everyone else, but couldn't he just say, make one of these heifers uh, burst into flames, just with his own power? I mean... I I don't want to I don't because my belief in a you know in a greater being beyond this realm is that it is, it would have to be in and of everything at all times instead of this kind of like geo specific superstitious tribal Bronze Age bullshit um, that that my God technically speaking if he wanted this to happen um, would just make it happen. Without any help from us, you know what I mean. It, uh, uh, since since the second coming is not going to be predicated on whether we're ready or not, um, specifically, I don't. I I'm just saying, if, if I was God, and I very well might be, so I apologize if it turns out later that I am and I didn't realize, and then somebody tries to crucify me, and I was like, no shit. But um, if I was God, I would not set up a system wherein the most sort of religiously superstitious of my followers could uh, become impatient with, uh, with my timetable as far as the second coming and try to call my bluff by killing a cow. <laughs> Just as a, you know, sort of a, a fail-safe. You know what I mean? I, I just... I might even make sure there was a verse in the New Testament that says, no man shall know the hour nor the day, not even the sun shall know, or the angels in heaven, only the Father shall know. Shit like that. I would, I'd I'd make sure that was included in the scripture so that people wouldn't try this rando shit trying to get me to show up when I'm... I Frankly, I got other shit to do. I'm building other worlds that humans are going to live in tens of thousands of years from now. And, you know, it takes a long time to set that shit up because I operate on a different extra temporal, uh, you know, time and space plane. Um, so that you guys can mature into being permanent spirits that are worth having, um, in, you know, in the ether beyond, uh, the, the known universe. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. To do it. Well, that's just it. Um, you know. Yeah, that is the, that is the hang, hang up. Yeah. Uh, It's entirely possible. And I want to underscore that word. Mm. It's technically impossible um, uh, that anybody has the actual authority because they would have to be directed by God to queue up the end times, which specifically the word says you can't do. <clears throat> possible that the group that is pushing this right now, who have the cow, they're pushing have the these heifers, if they're. They have these heifers, multiple plural heifers. There is one that they deem to be quali- uh, qualified to be slaughtered and burned. Mm-hmm. There's like three of the eight. The other ones just aren't pretty enough. Burn. Or are too pretty to slaughter. Wink. Um, okay, so they do that. Is the <laughs> cow with two buttholes, are you happy now? Thanks, Lewis. Thank you very much for for going even further than I was willing to go. Uh, chat room, we have a winner. <laughs> the greater religious community going to regard that and accept it. Here's another issue. Well, there's another issue besides the fact that no one has the authority given to them on behalf of God to kill a cow to magically cleanse a place they don't own to bring back God when he uh, uh, is on a timetable he has specifically said isn't up to you. But what, I'm sorry, there's another technicality. What about the Israeli government? Right. I didn't think about that. What now what? You know, obviously they'll pass a no heifers bill. Why did somebody think of this? Why did God even allow there to be a, oh. I but, tend to think they're going to frown very much. Yeah, on very that. much so. so you, yeah, probably, probably frown on that. Yeah, yeah. You could have ashes. You, could, you They could do it. They could have ashes. They're just sitting there. 
Yeah, yeah, you could just, you're allowed to have the, I mean, we can't stop you from having ashes. Point being, is just because you have a red heifer, and that's... Yeah, no, not just because. I'm not saying that's unimportant, but just because you have a red heifer, and even if they burn it, which is when I'll perk up and take notes. But who gets aroused by the slaughter and the burning of a red heifer? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Once it was reluctantly aroused, it was hard to get it aroused, and it is hard to get it aroused, oh, but we got it aroused. It's a, it's a dead heifer. Even th From red heifer to dead heifer, the Glenn Beck then, story. If you have the ashes, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to start next week in rebuilding the temple. Right. Yeah. Probably not. You're going to, I mean, I, uh, it doesn't make a, while it cures all disease and will guarantee to bring about the messianic future for all uh, Jews and Christians in the world, I guess who will repent and won't want to go to hell, which doesn't exist in the Old Testament, but is a giant fire pit outside of town that's sort of tantamount to the torture that you'll go through. Hell not being a destination, but an intrinsic state of being beyond space and time that you kind of get stuck in, you know, until the second day of judgment, which is, I guess, a thousand years. I don't know, which is like a blink in God's eye, technically speaking, but I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Because if they, if they burn a red heifer, Glenn, <laughs> mm -hmm. everybody's going to hear about it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and then nobody's, and they're not even going to be able to explain it because of all the laughing. <laughs> including the Muslim world, including the Israeli government. It's going to, that would be, a provocation now one day it's going to happen but wait a minute sorry um invading rafa not a provocation slaughtering a heifer and trying to bring back a temple by with its ashes i'm starting to think we're dealing with people uh on both sides of this argument that aren't all there i'm so i'm starting to uh, lose uh, pardon the the borrowing of the word uh faith in the idea that we're we have uh good negotiators on both sides of this whole two-state Israel conversation. I, um, hmm. E hmm. I mean, this is, this is like if, if Timothy McVeigh was in charge of talking down the, the branch Davidians. Is it now? Who knows? So, uh, only God, apparently. But uh, yeah, that's only if you read scriptures, which you assholes clearly don't. Bill, the... The pe if that is your real name. People who are doing it are the... Wait a minute. Don't say heifer and then doing it. The people for the, from the Temple Institute who... Temple Institute. From, from what I understand, I was over there. I talked to some of them um, uh, while I was over there. Okay, so they are insane. They talk to you, so clearly they're nuts. Last couple of times. They say they have everything that is required to rebuild the temple. They say if the temple... Yeah, they got bricks, they got Jerusalem stone, they got Chinese steel, they got uh, um, those, like, those little knee pads for when you're, you're doing new tile. Well, if, it, if it could be cleared so they could build it, they have everything they need to build it, build it except for the red heifer at the time. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. We, uh, what, we built this skyscraper, it's got plumbing, it's got air conditioning. It's got a great view. It's super tall. It's fantastic. You, one might even say you could reach unto the heavens. It's fabulous as a building, but we we the the one we can't we can't allow people indoors because we don't have a cow we can kill. Temple of the cow. I'm going hungry. No, I'm good. I'm good. This is great. This is these are big ribs. Time, you know, and permission to go up on the Temple Mount and build it. Um, I don't mind feeling red, except when I'm a temple again. Is that true? Do they have everything? Yes, I'm sure the construction materials are available readily. I mean, are they waiting nearby on trucks, you mean? or That's... Where will they ever find stone and mortar and tile and what kind of... Toilet piping do you have in a temple like of that level? What I was told years ago. Exactly. I mean, for for years, the Temple Institute has been, you know, going on and on about creating this. the garments for the priests, all the different utensils, all the different furnishings. Yeah, uh, the sporks, God's own spork. It's only available from the Temple Institute. They make all the Mormon underwear. 
And they don't launder it, though. That's up to you. Ew. Um, and, I mean, this is going back 15 years or more. Oh, well, so from the time of Jesus and the and Moses and Noah and it, it, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You know. Like they, do they know Cain personally? When I was there at the Temple Institute right. visiting, they, they said, yeah, we, we've got all of those things. The only thing that they didn't have was, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. And as you yeah, that's I, we have that, though. We have top men take care of it. Top men. You said, you know, there was a, a, an eligible red heifer for the waters of purification. So um, I think, you know. And by the way, the waters of purification, do they have to come from Lake Minnetonka? Because I think they do. And uh, it, I would actually think it doesn't have to be the Lake Minnetonka. Just the waters that Apollonia jumped into would be fine. I think that would qualify. Purify yourselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. They're very, um, uh, very motivated to see the temple rebuilt, but I believe that they. That ain't Lake Minnetonka. They also realize that it's not just getting everything together and boom, here we go. They're yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> what kind of an asshole thinks that, like, some sort of religious, like, they're going to put all this stuff together and then poof, it's gonna, something magical is going to happen? There's a lot of things that are going to have to be considered. Uh, yeah, zoning rules, obviously. Somebody's going to have to pick out the drapes. They're not going to pick themselves out. Jesus. So, I mean, you know. so not Jesus, obviously. Not Jesus. What has to... We've made a lot of progress, and these things... Mm, I don't think you have. I, I, would, I would. This would be slipping backwards. Could take a thousand years to check off the last couple, um, and it... So you're saying it's not happening anytime soon and we should probably just try to live peacefully amongst each other and not try to argue about the specific biblical significance of patches of dirt um, just because of the, it, like like some sort of glorified Graceland. Um, next, you're going to tell me that autographs aren't worth anything except it's proof that you met the person. It could happen tomorrow. You never know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know. If you don't believe me, watch Charmageddon. Um, how much, how far down the line are we on the... The, the Messiah coming back? <laughs> <As a, clears throat> the known prophecy of the things that have to happen before... Let me see. Uh, wars and rumors of wars. That's kind of a given all the time. The rise of someone who says that they're God and believes themselves to be the ruler of all the world. I mean... Are we going back as far as Genghis Khan, or do we think, or do the Caesars qualify? How about uh, the King of England at one point, or even the? I mean, there was a point where the the Vikings had a pretty far reach. You can argue that they actually reached south so far that they they they're what destroyed Rome. Um, the Muslim expansion obviously took over. There was clearly like three or four of those guys who thought they ruled the entire world because they didn't know it existed. There's two um you know major tribe chiefs in the in what would the area that would be the united states and canada that believed that they were the chief of the entire world they were pretty brutal dudes and there was always uh oh i i almost forgot the mayans silly me i mean talk about people who really you know were smoking their own stash and believe in their own press they, they their leader cut the hearts out of fifty thousand people over the course of three days to bless a temple uh you know, the, the clock starts ticking for the, the return of Christ. Mm, I, I, hey, uh, these folks don't believe in Christ. They're, they're specifically, these people don't believe that Christ is going to return. The Temple Institute and all these people, they don't believe Christ was the dude. They read the Talmud. They, they think he was an asshole. And that's one of the reasons why there was so much kind of back and forth anti-Semitism between um, you know, people beyond whatever monetary issues that allegedly the Germans had about people. But there was a big distinction where they were like, they write some shitty stuff about Jesus, the man in the Talmud. And there was a lot of pushback about that. Just saying. Well, I, I think the clock has already started ticking. Technically, didn't it? Right after the crucifixion. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a clock. It's now, let me say this. When it comes. Now, now, with this little. Uh, 
I think the clock has already started ticking. But let me say with this little caveat, which is that this is all bullshit. When it comes to Bible prophecy and being fulfilled, it is my experience that it almost never happens the way we think it's going to happen. Really? You sure he hasn't come back already? What? Did you miss the rapture, dude? I saw it happen. I knew I wasn't going because I'm supposed to be here to guide the, the good at heart into the promised land by making by lifting their spirits through the tribulations. That's why I'm here. But the fucking, you missed it, dude. The fucking escal the buck naked escalator to heaven, that already happened. If you're down here, uh, you are either insufficiently uh, repentant or he doesn't believe that you took him as your Lord and personal savior or you're just a decent person who didn't speak the words or whatever. And then I, I'll explain to you how it's not necessary and you'll have a lightness of being that will rise you up beyond this mortal coil. But I, I you know, I, oh, it happened exactly like they said it. Did. I mean, he already came back. You didn't see him? You know what kind of a horrible hateful sinner you have to be to not even see Jesus when he comes back. It happened like, dude, it's it's the year 3255. We've been doing this in a cycle as a learning experience. For, you don't know. That's embarrassing. I don't know. I, I just wouldn't talk about it if I were you. It just always happens the way it's written. And then when it happens, we go, oh, that's what he meant, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. Uh -huh. That's what he meant. So it doesn't happen necessarily according to our interpretation. It happens the way God says it's going to happen. So that being... Which is, the Bible is an interpretation of so... Understood. Here's Bill's opinion. Now, when seasons change, the weather changes. And what? All right. You ha Okay. I was with you with this whole temple rebuilding and bringing back the Messiah and the slaughtering of the, and cleansing all illnesses with the, by touching dead stuff. I was fine with that. But what the hell are you talking about, seasons change? You, this is one of these climate motherfuckers. <laughs> what kind of woke bullshit? All right, I'll continue, but I don't like it. Every spring in our part of the country, and you're familiar with it there in Texas as well, when springtime comes around, you know, you have the potential for violent weather. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what I... That's, that's the way we always look at it. You know, springtime, the time of violence. <laughs> what? And sometimes sometimes we get severe thunderstorm watches, but then if the... Okay, sorry. This dude clearly lives in tornado land. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, he's, his, his church is full of people who live in trailers. Okay, this is explaining everything. Conditions, you know, worsen, then it can become a warning. Um, my yes to move, <laughs> obviously not. Opinion is this constitutes a thunderstorm watch. <laughs> Great, he's doing the theological weather now. We got a uh, we got a powerful demonic front coming up from the south, of course, mixing together with a with a cold front of angelic patience in the north, mixing together, creating kind of a a, a biblical emotional tornado for true believers, whipping straight through there. And of course, we've got um, some uh, bigoted, uh, sexist asshole posing as the uh, you know wanting people to believe he's pious, being tried for uh, sexual misconduct and. And a bunch of other bullshit up here in the Northeast, and of course, is creating sort of a a, a a super storm of demonic energy up there, mixing around. That's New York; they expect it this time of year. And then, of course, over in California, lovely beaches, sunny, seventy-two. It doesn't mean that we're under a warning. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily imminent. Now, things can. Yeah, we know. Change tomorrow, as you said, and all bets are off. That's what the thing is. You know what I mean? Jesus is kind of like the weather. Like, you know, if they tell you it's going to rain, you'll bring an umbrella and then it's sunshine and you're like, oh, this will work as a parasol. This is great. And you're like, it's good. You probably don't want to get too sun. The Lord wanted to make sure that I didn't get too much sun today. It was very nice. It was really very nice. And then the next day you're like, it's going to be sunny out. So I'll bring my parasol. And then it rains. And you're like, oh, I still got it. This is good. Um, <laughs> and everything's going really fast. And when you say right. that this is a warning, not a watch, he means Dubai and the rainfall. Yes, somebody brought it up in the uh, yeah. You're talking about the red heifer. Of course. We haven't. Yes, yes, of course we're talking about the red heifer. Where have you been? 
I'm thinking that the presence of red heifers constitutes, if I can put it this way, you know, I don't know that you can. We're under a thunderstorm watch, not a warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's sort of like, I don't know, maybe. It's sort of like, it's it's not quite a weather report from the National Weather Service that will actually give you, um, you know, they can see a storm by a satellite. They know it's moving in your direction, how fast it's moving and when the rain's going to hit your area. It's like licking your finger and sticking it up as you walk out of the house and going, I don't know, I think it's going to snow in July. Doesn't mean that the rebuilding of a temple is imminent. It means that there are people in the land of Israel who want to see that happen. They've been that's is that's obviously new. working toward that. They've been since when? Preparing since the nineties. I'm going hungry for that. They're going to have everything in place when the time is right. It, yeah, and it's just not right now. At least in their eyes. And can I say this as well? You know, some can I say this as well? This is a really great thing to talk about when you're trying to avoid talking about the fact that the guy that this asshole and you voted for is on trial for paying hush money to a porn star. Great conversation. Way to eat up 15 fucking minutes. Um, Dunzo. I, I gotta say, like, I, that was all the fun I could wring out of that bullshit. Um, oof. And I, I, I went way over, but I just, I. <laughs> I, I, here's the ultimate takeaway from that. Not just that the superstitious are, you know, uh, and the religious are the antithesis of true faith and belief, um, but also that these guys will yammer on forever about fucking anything to avoid talking about Trump paying hush money to a porn star. That's that's the takeaway from that story. That these motherfuckers will make themselves look like absolute dickheads. Um, simply to avoid like going broaching that conversation because they know how many voters he's going to lose as this trial goes on. That's exactly it. like, I mean, there was major fucking news and they are dodging the fuck out of this stuff. Is that, it, that is the takeaway from that little bit of video. I'm just saying. And uh, your little takeaway is I love you and you're awesome and thank you guys for your support and thanks everybody for the bits and the likes and all that kind of stuff. Super Chats really help the show out. Uh, um, being a Patreon is a great way to support the show. Patreon.com slash Hal Sparks. Um, I am moving our next comedy show because I've got to be in Philly for a sexy liberal and I have to fly out that day to get there in time so I can do radio in Philly. This time I will definitely be able to do my radio show in Philly because I know the hotel we're going to be staying in and I know it's got good enough uh, internet. So fingers crossed, no other things happen, but I will be there in time to do my show. Just, uh, yeah, just no, also the people, the temple of the dog. We need to bring back the temple of the dog. I think, you know, mother, mother found me on her step. Pushing forward back is the best song on that album. Precious mother, help me to undress until the day I started pushing. You know that song? Does anybody know that song? Too late to cry, she turned away. I started pushing. I love that one. Anyways, tomorrow's payday. Good for you. All right, that's awesome. Uh, yes, tomorrow is uh, garbage day for me. Um, I saw no future in this life. Started pushing, pushing, pushing forward back. I can't, I mean, I'm reading and doing. I was pushing, pushing, pushing forward back. I was pushing. I, I don't want to do it as loud because there. All right. Uh, love you guys. I'll do it later. Anyways, you're wonderful. Uh, take care of yourself. I'm going hungry. Meanwhile. Here I am like an idiot. Right. Uh, that dude. <laughs> Just remember. Uh, that's good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, see you tomorrow. Early. By the way, tomorrow's Friday. I, Rob Glenn will be on with us. More. I've got some tech tools that are going to blow your mind. On so many levels. The, the, we're entering robots and wearables. Here it comes. You Consider yourself warned. I've got everything I need to AI rebuild the temple.
Trump will be found guilty, Casey. Don't worry about it. Yes, it's next Saturday. Next, a week from tomorrow is uh, was going to be my flapper show. Clarifying. Thanks, Laney.